Okay, and we're here, and we're live, and welcome in to Cringemas. It's a story time Saturday. My name's LJ Bray. My pronouns are they, them. And we're back into uh, Campus Notes today. How's everybody going? How's, um, how's your Saturday going, everyone? Or Friday night, as it were, for some of you? It is, yes, time for some weirdness. Time to get cringe and figure out what the hell's going on in this story. Because uh, last time we finished one of the rounds, and it ended with some time travel, which I'd been calling all along. I knew there'd be time travel. So now I'm guessing that we have to unlock, like, all the rounds before we can get, like, further on in the story, before we can unlock some progress. So I th I'm trying to recall what we were doing last time. Uh, let me have a look-see. We got into the Labyrinth of Flowers and Knowledge, which I guess is where... We ended up in the botanical gardens again after what's her face? Uh Beret Girl Shion. Um disappeared and then reappeared after like two months. Sorry about that, just taking a drink. Because it is incredibly hot here, and seeing as it's only three in the afternoon, it's only going to get hotter as we go on. So uh, let's get started. Oops, sorry for bumping the table there. Uh, so yeah, Labyrinth. Uh, <laughs> you fell asleep in the middle of the first stream of this, so you're more lost than uh, uh, I am. Uh, how do I load this? Click, click. Um. Load. Load. Oh. It would help if I was on the game. I was clicking away at the preview on OBS. That explains a lot of why nothing was happening. Oh, good start. Oh, okay, we saved right at a choice. Do I really want to know? Um, let's scroll back. Oh, great, thanks. Very helpful, journal. Thank you for telling me what previously happened in the conversation. That really helps give context. Okay, 50-50. And we've saved here, so I guess we can come back and make this choice again. Do we really want to know? I guess, yes, we want to know. I can't see why we wouldn't want to know. Of course, I need to hear it now that you've broached the subject. All right, I'll tell you. We got the achievement Observer. Kiriakun, hi. What are you two doing? Kozuki-san let go of me immediately. The first thing I saw was Fuma's questioning face. N nothing he couldn't find you with his eyes open, so we decided we could try to find you with his eyes closed. Chian chan you aren't making any sense. W what are you doing, Fuma? Oh, I was on the phone, calling home. There was something that bothered me, but everything's okay now. I'm curious as to what's going on with Fuma and like his childhood friend. I feel like there are ba important background characters that are happening that we're not going to find out until like we get to the true path, maybe, in a, uh, going on with like Fuma's story. Really? If you say so. We returned to Kurumi-san and Togi-san. Kurumi-san looked out of breath, and she was leaning against Togi-san for support. Usually, it was the other way around. Kurumi-san was red in the face, and she looked a bit flustered. Actually, now that I think about it, the fact that we picked, like, yes, we want to know, didn't actually fucking affect anything, because Fuma wandered in. Like, we didn't learn anything. Welcome back. What's the matter, Xion-chan? You look grumpy. I wanted to ask Togi-san what was the matter, too. Fuma-kun, can I have a talk with you? Huh? Me? Yes, can I have a moment with you? Everybody, do you mind going on ahead without us? Okay, we'll walk slow. I wonder what those two are going to secretly talk about. I'm really curious. Kurumi-san stopped her feet as we came upon a leg. Are we going to eavesdrop? Um, when you put it that way, I feel guilty. What do you think, boy? Um, I th think last time we chose to go spy on them. I guess, in theory, we should choose not to do that. But, I mean, that seems like such a boring option. But I guess we should, just for the sake of completion. 
Did she turn up to be a beast woman? A uh, dog girl here? Um, technically no. Technically we didn't. What happened last time was we ended, she ended up confessing her feelings for us and after some back and forth and some high school drama, we ended up returning those feelings. And then we ended up trying to elope and we ended up getting on a train. But then that train turned out to be an infinite train that like seemed to be in some kind of almost like dreamlike dimension or something. So we couldn't escape in the end. And then we uh, ended up getting sedated and traveling back in time. And only us and Kurumi had uh, memories. And then that was the end of the story. Like the credits rolled and that was it. It was pretty fucking uh, weird and shocking to tell you the truth. But I assume the traveling back in time thing is going to be how they justify us doing multiple routes. It'll be like, uh, like Yuta will get, gain his memory in the final true route and be like, oh, I remember all these alternate paths because I've been traveling back in time every time. Kind of thing. I feel like I've seen that happen before in, in visual novels. Uh, but let's not spy on them this time. Let's wait here. Oh, and we got the achievement, no thanks. If Puma's there, I don't think Kozuki-san will run away again. Exactly like Outer Wilds? Oh, okay. Uh, I don't really know that much about the Outer Wilds, but yeah, okay. It's definitely a, 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 a something I've seen in multiple visual novels. Um, uh, run away again. Things like Steins Gate and um, uh, Zero Escape, I think both cover a uh, similar kind of uh, ways of explaining multiple routes. And uh, what was the other one from the same guy as uh, Zero Escape? AI, the Somnium Files, I think, is another one. Yeah, I guess we shouldn't. But let's not walk any further. Why? Because we've almost made a full circle, which, we're, which means we're almost at our destination. I want to show you my surprise when we're all together. I'll just squat here till everyone arrives then. Saying that, Togi-san simply squatted by the lake and began toying with the grass nearby. Moments later... No! Wh What's wrong, Togi-san? I found a snail, so I poked it. Now it's climbing up my arm! Ew, it's cold and slimy and wet. Oh, I envy you, Togi-chan. It's so cute! Take it off! Take it off! Uh, shouting in uh, Togi's like really dramatic voice is uh, quite an experience. How is it that you couldn't avoid a snail? Kurumi-san took the snail off Togi-san's arm and began petting it and fussing over it thoroughly. She placed it gently on a leaf. Ugh, why did it choose to climb my arm? I will never know. They say that snails are affected by leucochloridium. Uh, they say that snails that are affected by leucochloridium can't help but feel an urge to climb upwards. Uh, Leuco what? That's the brain parasite, right? The, the, well, no, I don't know if it's a brain parasite, but it's the parasite that affects um, snails, right? And makes them suicidal. They basically climb up to get eaten by birds because that's where the parasite like uh, breeds is in the stomachs of birds. So it makes the snail kill itself to get inside the bird. Leucocoridium. It's a parasite. They don't live in Japan, though. Infected snails get grossly colorful and thick antennae, and they start climbing higher and higher on whatever plant they're on. This topic is compelling, but repulsive at the same time. It works that way because the main objective is to have birds eat them, so the birds can lay eggs with parasites. Ew. But... That means the parasite can control the snail's movements, right? Yeah! Snails must be pretty simple if they can be manipulated by tiny parasites. You know, there are parasites that affect human brains too, like brain nematodes. They enter from open wounds and climb up your nerves, finally reaching the brain to have a good meal. People that get eaten apparently act strangely. Ugh, I feel sick. Name my toads, nematodes, just playing with words. What do you mean, just playing with words? 
Oh no, I can't stop shaking. You want me to warm you up? You're the reason I've got the chills. Oh, I am? I feel so loved. Ah. There are tiny organisms that overwrite DNA, too. Apparently, there's a method of making a virus carry acids to restructure DNA. Yeah, toxoplasmosis. Uh, specifically toxoplasmosis gondi, I believe it is. It, uh, is in cat poop. And, um, well, what it does is it infects rats, and it, it seemed to, uh, make rats attracted to the smell of cats, and possibly even suicidal to that same degree. And it's theorized, because we know that, uh, humans can carry it, that it may also cause us to love cats as well, in that same kind of way. Um, I think in rats, it, like, specifically makes them, like, aroused by the smell of, like, cat, uh, markings. Like, cat urine and stuff. Yeah, very weird. So it's not proven that it definitely causes us to love cats, but that's how- it, that's one theory, is what it does when, um, you're infected by it. And it's an extremely common, uh, infection. Like, something like a large portion, like, large uh, percentage of the world population has it. Uh, me uh, method of making a virus carry acids to restructure DNA. Huh? The DNA we have in our cells and the mitochondria DNA are different things. So, I guess if we think we, uh, if we think have one organism per cell, microorganism per cell, so I guess if we think have one microorganism per cell, mm, so I guess if we think we have one microorganism per cell, that tells us how our bodies should function. I guess we could say they're like parasites that control us. Okay, I don't think that was translated very well, but I think what Kayan's saying is that the mitochondria uh, is the powerhouse of the cell. No, uh, uh, she's saying that mitochondria are actually a separate um, organism that got uh, enveloped by uh, human cells at some point in uh, the distant past. Like it used to become its own separate thing and became incorporated within our cell as its own um, uh, you know, subunit of the cell, and uh, that's actually how we picked it up. Like, that's where my mitochondria come from, and, and how we kind of became a more complex organism. It wasn't just by developing our own mitochondria, it was by eating basically another uh, thing, and then it becoming part of our own DNA. DNA is a lot like that. We have a lot of um, what we call junk DNA, which is actually um, uh, believed to be possibly um, remnants of like retroviruses and stuff like that. Yes, exactly, ATP. Uh, sorry, wh what is that? I mean, that's the, the bond storing thing, but... Uh, adenosine triphosphate! Adenosine triphosphate! Did I get it? I think I got it. ATP. Adenosine triphosphate. Um... It tells us how our bodies should function. I guess, uh, we could say they're like parasites that control us. Yuda! Uh. Yeah. I jumped up as he clapped me on the shoulder. Oh, it's you, Fuma. Rah! I screamed again because Fuma looked like he had aged 50 years. W what happened with you and Kozuki-san? Don't ask. Kozuki-san looked away uncomfortably. Oh, wow. Okay. Because last time when we spied on them, it seemed like they were like, she was confessing to him or something, but also it seemed like it was kind of like, almost comically like, we were supposed to misinterpret what was actually happening. What? What exactly did she say to him? Uh, that could cause this reaction. I'll give you a piece of advice. Just make up your mind on what you want to do, Yuta, and do it as soon as possible. Show it. Hmm. I wonder if she said that she loves us. Shion said that she loves us and asked Fuma for advice? Because why else would he say something like that? Or I don't think I can take this anymore. That might be- that might explain his reaction. Like being annoyed that all the girls seem to love us. Uh, okay. Huh? Well, that was unexpected. I thought you'd say, but I never. Blah, 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 and run away again. Yeah, because I think after today, I know what I want to do. 
Oh, uh how? -huh. I'm looking forward to your choice. I really am. Kuma exclaimed, and for some reason, he winked at Kozuki-san. Forget me not. Okay, now that we're all here, it's the highlight of the day. Sorry I made you walk around for so long, but actually, my secret's already. Kurumi-san faced us with a clouded expression and stopped mid-sentence. Kurumi-san? It can't be. It's still here? Oh. Hey, I see. Yeah, of course. Okay, I'm gonna show you now. Ta-da! Kurumi-san faced us again, but this time with a wide smile and her arms spread out. Ta-da! It's just a leg! Not that, Fukun. Look! By your feet! My feet? Oh! It was Kozuki-san that exclaimed in... It was Kozuki-san that exclaimed in surprise first. Okay, okay. Here we go. We've got Werewolf Girl, also known as Boo Belt, um, a.k.a. Kayan chan We've got, uh... Vampire Girl, also known as Pointy Teeth, uh, also known as uh, Togi-san. And then we've got uh, Shion here, who uh, I call Beret. Uh, Devil Bird calls uh, Fupa Sweater, or Fupa Jumper, um, due to what's going down, on down here. Um, but I suspect she might be reanimated, or some kind of zombie or vampire. There was some kind of line in one of the runs, I don't remember where, that made me think, wait, is she, did she come back from the dead or something? That's what I'm thinking now. And Lord knows what kind of secret, uh, uh, Boom is hiding. I love this, <laughs> I fucking love this shot. She pointed at the flowers blooming by the lake. Yep, look at all those pretty blooming flowers. Look, at, look, can you see the flowers? They're so beautiful. All this, all these colorful flowers. <laughs> Seriously, could they not find a picture of flowers? It didn't even have to be the forget-me-nots that are in the thing. They just took a photo of some, um, leaves. <laughs> and then, and then try and tell us that they're flowers. <laughs> they were small, small flowers that could have been missed easily. Yeah, obviously so easy you couldn't even take a photo of one. Um but they bloomed as blue as the skies today. Forget-me-nots. Right on. They represent the essence of what we, Earth is Nights, are about. Okay, in case uh, you missed this, uh, last time, uh, last time, but uh, a while back, uh, the group named themselves Bertha's Nights, which was after like some kind of story about some lady called Bertha in like medieval Europe, whose like love got washed away trying to get her a flower. And that flower was a forget-me-not, because apparently, like, the last thing he, he shouted was like, Don't forget me! So, that's explaining, like, and of course, forget-me-nots is important because everyone at the university forgets us every single day, or apparently whenever they stop paying attention to us, honestly, the rules have kind of been a bit uh, haphazard in how they work. Like, they did not explain them well. So, maybe I made some wrong assumptions, or maybe the game just doesn't remember what's going on. <laughs> apparently, he also forgot what flowers look like, yes. I wanted to show this to all of you, all this time. Wow, they're so pretty. But Xion-chan, I thought forget-me-nots are supposed to bloom in spring. That's the strange bit. I thought they would have wilted by now. I wonder why they're still in bloom. Well, maybe it's got something to do with the fact that you're in a botanical garden, like a place that's specifically designed to, like, cultivate rare and unusual flowers. Like, they're, they're, it's not like this is just the wild. This isn't the wilderness. People look after these flowers. I only believe what I see with my own eyes. I think they were waiting for us. Waiting for the day we all go back together again. Okay. L let me just get real for a minute. How is that believing what you see with your own eyes? You've just made a massive assumption that apparently the plants were aware of you and waited, like, postponed dying? Just specifically so we showed up? That makes no fucking sense whatsoever. And you're believing a ton of things that you're not seeing with your own eyes to come to that conclusion. Mm 
Maybe you're right, Kurumi-san. Destiny exists. Again, you saw some flowers blooming out of season and you think destiny exists. That's a lot more than believing what you see with your own eyes. See? I told you it was worth coming here. Yes, it was. Thank you. Hee <laughs> hee. And it was in best timing, too. True. I think I've gotten my thoughts together now. I hope you're thinking what I'm thinking. What? What's all this about? You're gonna tell us what you think IMA is about, right? Yes, listen. To my... And my... Conclusion! Now we have like a big time skip, I believe. Spooky and Chains, that's a different chapter name. Ooh, and we're in a different place. But I think there's been a time skip of about a week, but it depends. Last time we all seemed to believe in Kayan's explanation for what it was, which I think was a pretty crazy explanation, but I don't remember. But I'm guessing by what's happening here, we ended up uh, choosing uh, Togi's explanation. I assume it must be affected by previous choices we've made in the storyline. Um, I'm guessing, because we're in her humble abode. Wait! Doesn't she live in an apartment outside of the exclusion area? How do we get outside? No one's supposed to be allowed to leave the campus area ever since, like, the government put, like, a a, a... a quarantine down. People can come in, but you can't leave. Or at least, like, I guess, like, only people who are visiting are allowed to leave. Hey there, boy. Welcome to my humble abode. togi -san opened her apartment door and welcomed me in excitedly. From her jolly behavior, I knew I was going to be in trouble. Don't tell me I'm the only one here today. Oh, pish. Look, I'm here, aren't I? I'm going home. I turned around, and Togi-san yelled out cloyingly. Hey, wait. I quickly headed towards the stair. I was pretty sure she was going to follow me. Then we would head to the nearest diner nearby, and I would give her a good scolding. That's what I thought as I made my way down the stairs, but she never came after me. Hmm? That was unexpected. I'm really going to leave? I whispered, but she didn't come down. I'm going to drink all the tomato juice I brought for you. Okay, that might have been explaining. Uh, Toki-san, when we first met her, uh, drank tomato juice. Apparently she loves tomato juice. Push them all down the stairs, end this madness. Yeah, I, I am worried about this view of the stairs, that someone's gonna fall or something. I raised my voice slightly, but Toki san still didn't come down. Ugh, you're such a bother. I stomped my way back up to her apartment when... Dot, dot, dot. I found her unconscious by the entrance, with the door wide open. Togi san are you alright? I ran to her side and propped her up. She smiled faintly, looking paler than ever. Haha. <laughs> Sorry. I got a bit excited when the doorbell rang. I jumped up and got a bit giddy. I mean, she's faked passing out before. I don't know that uh, I'd ever trust her again when she passes out. Thanks. Uh, no, that's not a good time. She's she's <laughs> like a fainting goat. Thanks. It's okay. I can stand by myself. Don't be silly. Hang on to me. I helped her up and took her into the room. Then... Ha! doggy san stretched an arm out to close the door and locked it too. I mean, we can just unlock it ourselves. I think I'll chain it as well. I'm glad to see you're in better shape than I thought. That's funny. I expected an, oh no, you tricked me, response. I may have been tricked, but you do look very pale. Besides, if you look at it from the inside, of course I can unlock it when I want to. See? <laughs> yeah, it's exactly, that's exactly what I pointed out. I took the chain off with one hand. 
Uh, you aren't very cute today, boy. Aside from that, you've never said that you were okay ever, Yogi-san. That means you're really ill. You can't trick me. Where's the bed? Over there. Don't try anything funny. I won't. No hesitation. I'm hurt. I took her to the silver bed and set her down. Yogi-san leaned back and let out a long sigh. Shouldn't you lie down? I told you, I'm okay. She laughed. I pressed a palm to her forehead. You're a bit warm. She had a pretty low body temperature to start with. I remembered how cool her hand was the last time I held it. She probably felt a lot worse than it looked on the thermometer. Did you catch a cold? Fancy you being in the medics. Okay, Chucky's studying to be a, um, a doctor. So I assume that's what being in the medics means? Although that's a very awkward translation. I'm not a doctor yet. Don't try to debate me now. Hey, boy. Why don't you try taking my temperature by using your forehead instead of your hand? Maybe I don't feel that warm. Don't try to be naughty. That leaves me with nothing to say. That suits me fine. You're beautiful when you stay quiet. Hmm. I mean, you're beautiful when you stay quiet? Is like... I don't know, that sounds like I'm such a... A horrendously misogynistic thing to say. <laughs> this is boring. That was quick. Let's just say I know how valuable time is. You're positive, too. See? Isn't it better that we talk? The more we talk, the better you get to know me. She smiled innocently, and I almost fell into her trap. You should lie down. But if I do, you'll go home, won't you? I'm not that mean. I'll stay here till you wake up. Really? But you tried to leave just now. Uh, I wasn't serious. Or rather, I thought you'd come after me. Really? Yogi-san lilted an eyebrow, lifted an eyebrow, and smiled cynically the way she usually did. How does one smile cynically? I guess I could imagine how one smiles cynically, but I don't feel like that's the right word for this situation. Are you sure you want to stay? I might infect you, you know. I'm surprisingly resilient, and don't start with the idiots don't catch cold thing. That isn't true. I won't say that. I know that's a stupid myth. I'm going to be a doctor, remember? Oh, that's right. Although, when it comes to you, I tend to forget that in three seconds. Maybe you really are an idiot. No, it's just because it's you. Oh, yeah. Hey, no matter how immune you... No matter how strong your immune system is, you'd catch my cold if I kiss you, won't you? Yogi-san's eyes shone brightly, as if she just had a brilliant idea. She leaned forward. You want to infect me? They say that you, if you pass on your cold to someone else, you get better. That's a stupid myth too, isn't it? Miss going to be a doctor? <laughs> Dang it, yes. It's just that the carrier is usually in the last stages of recovery when the victim received the cold. That's how the myth spread. I've heard this talk with Kan Chan before, but bacteria are alive too. Of course they would prefer a stronger, sturdier place in which to build, in um, which to house themselves, wouldn't they? The feelings of flu bacteria, huh? Wait, is flu a bacteria? I thought flu was a virus. I could be wrong. It's cold, it's a cold, the cold's a virus. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure flu is virus. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, this game can help. sometimes be just one step ahead of me. By the way, boy, there's no such thing as flu bacteria. 
Really? Then what's the flu? What happens when your respiratory system gets inflamed? Or shows symptoms of inflammation? Or at least, that's what it said on the web. You took that off the internet? Don't make that face. It was correct information, and it was written in a way that even idiots can understand. Uh, I don't think that's the definition of flu, though. Because that would be an itis, wouldn't it? An inflammation? Uh, it would be like, um, well, what are the lungs called in doctor speak? Probably something like, uh, no, I don't know what lungs are called. But it would be something itis, wouldn't it, if it was an inflammation? Or would that just be an infection? Uh, it might just be an infection for itis. Either way. I get scolded if I copy that word for word in my paper. But it's useful when someone wants a simple explanation. I was just trying to say that pathogens that cause flu can vary, and you can only tell from the symptoms. <laughs> She's going to be a terrible doctor? They say that the flu is the beginning of a million illnesses, but since the flu itself can be caused by a million possibilities, that's not too far from the truth. I mean, she's true to some degree, but I think that's more... I mean, they, they, that's both the flu and, um... And then the cold is even more varied as to, you know, what... what it is and what it does. Hmm. So calling something flu bacteria is like calling a dog a mongrel, is it? No, that's not... that's not it at all. I keep three dogs back home. That was a sudden change in topic. No, it's not. They're all mongrels, named yellow, silver, and blue. They're so pretty. Dogi-san's eyes misted, and she seemed to be... Oh. Dogi-san's eyes misted. She seemed to be remembering her pet dogs, but I half suspected it was because of the flu. And what does that have to do... I was about to ask her how that was relevant, when it suddenly struck me. Yellow? Silver? Blue? Don't tell me. This combination is... So you've noticed, boy? Yes. Say it. Benza... Benza... Clock? Benza Clock? They've censored... Oh, sorry for punching the microphone. They've censored this word here. I don't think it's O-Lock. But I don't know what the word is. Like, obviously, it's some kind of... Product or something? Benza block? Benza clock? No idea. Mwahaha! <laughs> yes! Oh! I named them after the series of OTC medication. Nobody in the family has noticed yet. Benza block? Benza blockers? Huh? I'm OTC medication? What is OTC medication? Over the counter medication. Is it, so is it like some kind of brand of like ibuprofen or paracetamol? You're evil. I can't believe you came up with something as awful as that. What? Oh no? What is it? Did you look it up, Bruxis? Because I don't understand why um, Uter is ex ex it's calling it evil if it's just normal medication, but... Is it Oscilloconcinium? I don't know. What is Oscilloconcinium? You tell me what you think it is. Benza block. Or Benza clock. Benza something. Oh, homeopathic BS. Oh. That would maybe make sense. I mean, Japan is super big on, um, like, herbal medications and stuff like that. They, they really lo are loathe to take any kind of, um, actual medication. For uh, anything except the most major of illnesses. Ha ha! Ah, that hurts. Are you all right? Ah, I just laugh so much my stomach hurts. 
it's quite refreshing to see you pro so protective of me. Protective of you? Oh, because she's hurt. I thought because of you were annoyed at what she called her dogs. Don't scare me like that. You're going to stay here till I wake up, boy? That's my intention. Well then, if. This is just if. But if I went to sleep and never woke up? Would you stay there till my body goes as cold as this room? Can you stop making those morbid jokes? Maybe I'm not joking. Mmm, this sounds like some vampire bullshit. Come on, vampire. Yogi-san said, her eyes turning into slits. If you tease me too badly, I'll get angry with you. Hmm. Oh, scary. I'm sorry. I guess I'm feeling uncharacteristically insecure today. I said so confidently that my theory was right, and everyone got everyone to agree with me. And now look at how I am. They dilute, they dilute one fermented duck liver and it's diluted so much that you'd have to eat more mass of it than exists in the visible universe to get one atom of the duck liver. And it's like $35 sugar pack. Homeopathy is the... I mean, it's the craziest bullshit ever. And the fact that like anyone would believe it for one second makes no sense. It is like, it's up there with like pyramid power when it comes to woo woo kind of stuff. To, like dilute things to such a degree <sighs> and then you get people like uh, diluting things like bleach and stuff but then they like the homeopaths will start like upping it to dangerous levels just because it feels like it's actually working at that point you believe pyramid power more than homeopathy yeah I was actually thinking about Pyramid Power the other day because I was watching um, like clips from Mythbusters and they covered that story and uh, something Adam Savage said that he said, um, yeah, they think water has memory. That one crazy guy, that one Japanese guy who did that one experiment where he's like, hey, see, look, these crystals, they uh, like remember stuff, like they can feel stuff. And it's like, no one's ever been able to, um, yeah, <laughs> in that case, all water would be both medication and poison, yeah. Like pyramid power where they did the myth that like putting a razor blade under like a, a little pyramid could somehow make it sharper just like magically and adam savage said that like that was probably like the number one myth he, he regrets ever doing because it was just so so ludicrous that like they probably did more harm than good by even just putting that myth out there even though they prove you know obviously that it's completely false it's such a dumb thing that like what was the point in even like trying to uh uh test it basically The botanical garden, Kurumi-san, Togi-san, and Kozuki-san. Oh, <laughs> I was reading it in my Togi voice, but it's not. No one's speaking. This is just us going back over what happened in the, the week between uh, then and now. At the botanical garden, Kurumi-san, Togi-san, and Kozuki-san presented their theories on IMA. We decided to vote on which theory sounded the closest to the truth. Yes. Okay. So it, is, it went exactly like I remember, except for some reason we all sided with Togi this time instead of uh, KN. So it looks like we're going down the Togi path. Kozuki-san's theory was that this world was made of several parallel layers. I quite like that theory. That theory to me makes the most sense. Uh, Kurumi-san's theory was that the herd was trying to reject the exceptions. Oh yeah, that was the weird thing. She like seemed to believe that like if everyone believes we don't exist, then maybe we don't exist. And it's like, that's not how reality works. Reality doesn't care about your beliefs. It just keeps on existing. Uh... Parallel universes makes the most sense, I, I think, out of like all the possible anime explanations as to what's going on at the moment. But considering that like it's being put next to these other explanations, I'm willing to bet that that's also bunk, and we'll find out the real truth uh, on the, the final storyline. In the end, we all voted on Togi-san's theory that IMA is a virus. Okay, they, I, I was giving the herd one a lot of shit, but uh, this also... I mean, I suppose, like, how else would, like... I suppose it's not impossible that uh, idiopathic mass amnesia is like some kind of 
if you were trying to be the most rational about it. Uh, you recently watched Source Code, played with those concepts. That's the one with they time travel over and over again, but like, he's also told that he can't change the past, but then he does. If I recall correctly, was that like Jake Gyllenhaal on a train? I may have only like watched trailers of it and stuff like that. Yeah. He's like supposed to be like going back and just kind of being like a security camera in the past, basically, to figure out what exactly happened. But then he starts like, he decides he's gonna rescue someone. And they're like, that's not how that works. But he's like, what I did. I mean, that's not, that, that's me like editorializing quite a bit as to what happens in the story, but. Uh, IMI is a virus. Uh, you sort of believe each time he goes back, it spawns a parallel universe. Oh, okay, that would make sense. Uh, IMA is a virus. I suppose, like, rationally, that would be, like, the, the most logical kind of first, um, port of call. Like, the idea that if so everyone was forgetting you, you'd, you'd, um, have to rule out at, at first that it isn't some kind of virus, some kind of mass amnesia, some kind of mass psychosis. You'd want to go the medical route first. Before you start speculating that maybe it's the rules of the world, the laws of physics that are wrong. I thought if we could find something, I thought we could find something if we did research. Togi-san looked at the ceiling and sighed. Togi-san's theory was that the areas around the University of Tsukuba were infected with a viral or bacterial strain that caused an unknown category of amnesia. We were a moon. A moon. We were a moon. We were immune. And so, although we remembered, everyone else forgot. We'd agreed that this could be the possible cause of IMA. There are parasites that are able to control their hosts, right? So I thought maybe a virus or bacteria could do it too. And the IMA virus is controlling its host to avoid us. That's okay, that's okay. I'm just gonna, we, we can't stop to question every single thing that's said in this. And you know, this is anime, you know? We're just going to have to keep moving forward. If it erased their memories of us and made us into strangers to them, then, then it would be natural for them to behave as if they forgot us every day. Yes. Wait, so they forget us every day? Before you were acting like they forgot us the second they stopped paying attention to us. Or so I thought. She sighed again. It was easy to collect samples from the IMA's victims around us, since Togi-san was a medical student. He just had to post a flyer onto the billboard saying they needed people to cooperate for an experiment. Students came and let us swab the insides of their mouths with a cotton bud in exchange for some sweets. But what if it isn't like something that's present in you, uh, your, your saliva, but like, you'd want to take blood samples too, wouldn't you? Also, I feel like college students would want more than just sweets to participate in experiments like this. Normally you get cash, like not in large amounts of cash, but some amount. To perform experiments, usually we had to receive permission from the university, but we used IMA to our advantage. We were supposed to check the samples for any viruses or bacteria, however. Even when we got Kurumi-san, who had just, such, just as much experience with a mic microscope as Togi-san had, to double check all of the samples, we only found common bacteria. Nothing could be found. If we couldn't find anything from membrane samples, it was natural that we would test blood samples next. Ah, again, the game proves itself to be one step ahead of me. But that was problematic. Oh dear, problematic. Did we get cancelled? I doubt we can get away with that without permission. I may know how to do it, but we don't have enough tools. We shouldn't expose the students to a possible threat of infection either. Oops, sorry for bumping the mic. Uh, and the other idea didn't work out. The other idea was for Togi-san to analyze her own blood. 
Even if we weren't infected, if we were immune, that meant we should have been able to find an antibody of some sort that would prove the theory was right. How the hell are you, do you find just a random antibody though? Like, we look at how long it took us to develop, you know, obviously viruses are something we've all become a lot more educated upon in recent years. But you look how long it took for us to, um, uh, even just uh, isolate and uh, sequence the genome of Corona, right? How is like one person, or maybe at maximum what, like two or three people with microscopes, able, going to be able to find uh, an antibody for a virus that they can't even identify yet? That they're not even sure it exists. But since nothing could be found there either, that meant we had another fact that proved Togi-san's theory was wrong. Anime waifu magic, yes. You could take a blood sample of me. Maybe you were just an exception and you'll find an antibody in mine. That's what you asked me over for, isn't it? I had come to visit her because she had sent an email to me requesting that I help her with her analysis. If that's what I asked you over for, I would have simply said, give me your blood. I really just need help with the analysis. Look, over there. yogi san pointed at a desk. It had a test tube filled with dark red liquid. That's... Gian chance. When did you do that? You could have just asked me. There was an occasion for it. Oh? An occasion? What do you need me to do? You're already doing what I want you to do. Just stay there, and keep me company. Um, I might be wrong, but... Hmm? Were you just lonely? Wasn't that pretty obvious? I think I was quite straightforward with you. Oh, I need to make another drink. My uh, mouth's drying up again. Is this my fault, or are you just too dense? Sorry, I think it's both. Both, is it? Well, that makes us a pair. yogi sans shoulders sagged. I'm afraid of being alone. Maybe all of you began to feel this way after IMA started. But I've always felt this way. Boy, what do you think of my room? I looked around, suddenly aware. The room was illuminated by a harsh fluorescent light. There was a sofa bed and a desk with a laptop and a few science tools scattered on it. Other than that, there was only a closet, a bookcase, and a small refrigerator. It's very clean. You can say it. It doesn't look like a girl's room. What does that mean? You're a med student. I feel like med students wouldn't have the time or desire to buying lots of fancy decorations. No, it doesn't, to be honest. It looks more lived in now than it ever has been. Because of IMA, I've been staying over here a lot more. I hate waking up alone in a room. That's why I go around staying at my friends. Don't you feel like you're the only person on this planet when you wake up in an empty room? I guess so. I don't know. I've always struggled with sleeping with other people. I prefer to sleep separately. Um, you know, like it, there's so much like movement and I don't know. It just yeah, like it's. I, I, I think it's a I think it's a good thing to prioritize getting a good night's sleep over having to be together at all times. And you know, it makes being together in the same bed uh, more of an event, you know? <laughs> it's not just something that happens all the time. Uh, I guess so. I thought back to the time when I came to Sukuba before meeting Fuma. I had experienced loneliness then. When I went to bed, I would worry that maybe I would stay alone the next day too. 
If Dogi-san had felt the same way all this time, I could understand how insecure she was. Come to think of it, first time I saw her, she had just left someone's dorm room. But since IMA occurred, she didn't have that many friends anymore. Sometimes I'll stay over at Xion Chan's. But remember she left us for a while. Why didn't you stay over at Kurumi-san's? The only time you've slept really well while sharing a bed uh, was with a dude in a freezing cabin under lots of blankets and wearing uh, clothes. Skin to skin contact when sleeping? Yeah, I don't like I don't like um, having like a lot of bare skin at all when I'm sleeping. Like it's just like I don't know it just puts me on edge. Like I need to be ready to be like up and fighting at any moment. I feel like when I'm sleeping, and you know I need to feel protected. You know, I want to be, you know, I want to be able to just jump out of bed and defend myself. Uh, why didn't you stay over at Kurumi-san's? I have. I knew it. But then why? Think about it. What would happen to her if a friend stayed over? She'd get really excited and behave as if it was a school trip until the sun went down. Till the sun went up, to be exact. Somehow, she still manages to leave for the first class in the morning. Happy as a clam. I don't know how she manages it. And that goes on forever. Finally, after a string of no-rule pillow fights and battle royale wrestling, I came to my senses. I'm sorry. Battle royale wrestling? How does that work? I, I mean, maybe that's a normal term in wrestling. I'm, I'm not a wrestling expert. But how does a battle royale work in wrestling? But, uh... I just, it just, like, occurred to me, the, the thought that we're talking about two college women having pillow fights and wrestling during a sleepover. That's, um... Okay. Let's move on. If I do that every day, I'm going to die. I should go to Kayan Chan's as the last resort. Although, I do like the comfort of her company. I see. Then, why didn't you say so in the first place? You could have just said, I'm afraid of being alone. Can you come over? Kurumi-san probably gets excited uh, because you'd stay, say something along the lines of, Let's play together. Because that's not cool. Huh. I never thought you'd be one to care about whether something was cool or not. I don't care if I'm uncool, as long as I know I'm doing it on purpose. So you're going to admit you've been doing it purposefully? Yes, so what? What? You're going to turn defiant now? Just because I'm the only one listening? Can you be more positive? Why not look at me with shining eyes and think, Wow, a beauty like mayazumi san just opened up to me, and only me. When you put it that way, don't you think I'd be tempted to think otherwise? Oh, so cold. You make me feel so lonely. <laughs> now I've got a cough. <laughs> it's rough when my mouth dries out while doing the turkey voice. It gets so, uh, squeaky. Now I've got a cough. My condition is worsening because you're being so unloving. Ah, all right, all right. Have it your way. I'm so honored to be here. I cried out in exasperation. Dogi-san stopped coughing immediately and flashed me a pointy smile. But it didn't last long. Her face fell, and she looked as if she were looking far away. When you close your eyes because you're scared, or you're alone, it gets worse because you put it in the dark, because it puts you in the dark. I used to think it was disgusting that I couldn't control these feelings. Used to? <laughs> I'm not going to explain. Then can I ask a different question? Why did you ask me out today? You didn't have to trick me into seeing you. You could have asked everyone over if you were lonely. Ozuki-san is back too. Who says I tricked you? I just forgot to call everyone else. Purposely, I'm sure. Not at all. 
it was willful negligence. I hear that often in the news or detective dramas, but what does that really mean? I, th I think I looked it up some time ago, but I've forgotten. Doing something not with the intention of making something occur, but doing something in the hope that it could be a possibility. I guess that's an explanation that's good enough. In a murder scene, it's like saying, I never meant to kill somebody, but I didn't mind if someone died. Hmm. You don't look satisfied. What's wrong? Was my explanation too difficult for you to understand? Nothing. It just means that didn't mean to be alone with me, but didn't mind if you were, doesn't it? Maybe I'll just go home. Togi-san blinked, then she smiled. You're so cute! This is why I can't stop teasing you. Thanks. This was reassuring. Do you think you could sleep now? Yes. Then I'll stay till you wake up. Thanks. Can I use your toilet? Boo, you just destroyed the romantic mood, boy. There, the toilet's right there. Yogi sound pointed carelessly and I grinned back. I headed toward the toilet. As I washed my hands, I noticed something strange. There was a white cloth hanging by the sink. It covered the mirror and it was pinned to the wall. I was curious, so I lifted the corners to see what, under what was underneath. What I saw was unexpected. The mirror was broken. Vampire! Vampire can't have mirror around. His vampire will be revealed by mirror. As if someone had thrown a heavy object against it and shattered it from the middle with cracks running outward like a spider web. I couldn't see my reflection. There was a bottle of moisturizer sitting by the sink, so I was sure this was where Togi-san had a morning routine. But wasn't it inconvenient without a mirror? I'm willing to bet Togi-san's never used a mirror in her life, because she's a vampire. Togi-san. I called out, but there was no answer. Getting worried, I headed back to the sofa bed, but Togi-san was just asleep. While she slept, I studied her bookcase. She looked at the bookcase when she asked me what I would do if she never woke up. It wasn't as if I was hoping to find anything, but then I noticed a small packet of medicine hidden away, pushed in between the books. They were sleeping pills. Most of them had been used up. I had an urge to shake her awake, but I didn't think she had gotten up while I was gone. I figured she hadn't swallowed all of this just now. She probably used it daily, and that's why most of the pills were gone. I felt slightly dizzy, so I sat down by her side with the pills in my hand. I was relieved to see her chest rise and fall to the rhythm of her breathing. As I had said before, Togi-san was beautiful when she was quiet. She had a fragility about her, as if she would dissolve into smoke and disappear when one wasn't looking. Like a vampire turning into mist. That's why I preferred her when she talked. I didn't care if she was clingy or had unfortunate tendencies. I wanted her to stay alive and to speak to me. What was the best course of action to ensure that? I thought about that while Togi-san slept. Hmm. Togi-san groaned softly. She fumbled around her pillow as if to find a pair of glasses. Her hand landed on the alarm clock and stopped it for a moment, then went on to feel for something else. I thought I might be in the way, so I tried to stand up, but then she grabbed onto the bottom of my shirt. Morning, boy. Morning, Togi-san. Although, it's night time. Did you sleep well? Thanks to you. How are you feeling? I think the fever has gone down. She got up and took a thermometer from her desk. It beeped and read 35.3 degrees Celsius. If that was her regular temperature, that was pretty low. You kept your promise. Hmm. Yogi-san, don't you ever commit suicide ever, 
even if the worst happens to you, <laughs> what the fuck? That's a fucking intense thing to um, have said to you first thing in the morning when you wake up. Doggy-san looks surprised for a moment, but recovered quickly to give me one of her infamous smiles. <laughs> Boy, I'll have you know, people can't die easily from sleeping pills, you know. What? People can't die easily from sleeping pills? I feel like that's definitely not true. But... Really? I didn't know. It is possible to ingest a critical amount of over-the-counter pills, but usually you wouldn't die, but instead suffer from a disability for the rest of your life, which could be worse than facing death. Um, oh, well, I mean, if we're talking about over-the-counter pills, then yeah, I guess, but, I mean, typically you don't think of sleeping pills as being over-the-counter, they're only prescription, right? But, don't worry, I'm not that pessimistic about life. Thanks to my merry men. Can I ask you something? I held the sleeping pills tightly in my fist. If I stay with you, can you sleep without depending on these? Boy, you have to think before you talk. You don't know what you're suggesting. I did think about it. Thanks to somebody I know that seemed to sleep forever, I had enough time to think it over. Are we gonna get some kind of fucking moralizing about not taking medication because uh fuck you game i know that like that's kind of part of japanese culture that they'll take anything before they take medication but it's fucking stupid really and what if i said yes i'll stay here every night to keep you company and if i said i didn't want that I'd make it my request for that promise you made me uh, back then. But I don't think you'll refuse. Hmm? Why? Because it wouldn't make sense. It contradicts what you've said so far. You know I love contradictions. Even so, I still get to use that promise you made me. I already know I'm right. Whichever way, I'm doing it. Checkmate, is it? Perhaps it was you who checkmated. We both grinned at each other, like masterminds that knew how evil their plans were to conquer the world. At that very moment, I felt as if we had connected. It wasn't a feeling as intense as love or hatred, but it was there, definitely. I'll tell you why I called you here today, boy. It's because you might be my ball and chain. You are someone that makes me want to show my second largest weakness. And someone I don't want to show my biggest weakness. Now, let's study that sample Xion Chan provided, shall we? Although I doubt we'll find anything. You just need to stay there and watch. That's all I ask of you. Yogi san said, and sat down by her desk. She seemed sure that she wouldn't find anything, even before she started. Time to take another drink. Okay, that's the last of that. I may be crude, but... Gozuki san said nervously as she sat down on her usual spot on the sofa. Why so stiff? Unless I was seeing things, didn't you two just come from the same direction at the same time? Um... Hmm? Yukon, Toki-chan, why do you two look so nervous? I wouldn't have thought Yukon and Fukun would turn up together since they both live at the same dawn. I expected that too. I wonder why kiriya kuns with Mayazumi-san. <laughs> it's, uh, no big deal, really. Meizumi-san, I can tell, you know, since that day, you know that I can tell, can't you? I 
It may have been my fault, but you're the one that started it. Um... I got you guys together here today because I have an announcement to make. Hey, Dogi-chan, you just avoided the topic. You're trying to trick us. Ahem. Ahem. I thought I should make it my priority to report to you all that after experimenting as much as our resources would allow, we did not find any proof that supported my theory. You mean you didn't find any antibodies in my blood sample? No. That means the only thing we can do now to further our research is to obtain a blood sample from an IMA patient. We've got the tools here. I know what to do. And I also practiced. I'd say that's a lot of effort for someone like myself. Look, I lifted my sleeves and showed everybody the proof of Togi-san's practice. If I may say so, the aftermath looked pretty gory. You shouldn't go around showing those scars, dude. You look like... You look like a hardcore addict. I'm just grateful long sleeves are in season. No wonder you two turned up together. Huh? Oh, yeah, right. uziki san had interpreted it conveniently, and I nodded in agreement while I broke out in cold sweat. The process... The process is the same as the membrane test. One sample is enough, or rather... It could be dangerous to try to obtain several samples, so we'll keep it this way. Although, I would have preferred to collect the sample myself. We tried that with the membrane test, remember? That didn't do any good. I know. Why? I'm the only medical student here. Why didn't anybody want me to do it? At the time, Kurumi-san had recruited the patients, and Kozuki-san had taken the samples, while Toki-san supervised. Because you look suspicious, Togi-san. Of course no one trusted you. You need more credibility. Ugh. Although the fact credibility didn't count was the positive side of the IMA. I thought the fact credibility didn't count was the positive side of IMA. Rust comes from within, you know. No matter how clean you maintain your environment, it wouldn't fix it. That's not true at all. That's not... Rust doesn't come from within. That... What? It comes from oxidization. Weird. Rust is very much a surface thing. Okay, okay, I get it now. Even if you get it, you still aren't reliable yet. So you still need our help, right? Hey, Big Henny. Merry Chromebook to you too. You here for some cringe, miss? We've, uh, we seem to be, uh, on Togi-san's path, so that's Vampire Girl, Pointy Tooth. Over here, we seem to be going, um, pursuing her storyline at the moment. But, uh, yeah, how's your, how's your Saturday been going? And, uh, how's, how's, well, I mean, how's things just going in general, I guess? That's right! Are you with me? Yes! You just started your day? Fair enough, fair enough. It is a pretty early stream. Uh... We're going to have bad weather later, so let's just get it done and over. Hmm? But it's sunny outside. I saw clouds moving in from the west. My head hurts from low pressure. I can smell the moisture in the wind, and the insects are flying low. Woke up 15 minutes ago? Oh, that's impressive. Uh... It's going to rain in the evening, they all said together. I can't do multiple voices at once, so... Right. Well, what a fascinating conversation. They all... It's nothing more interesting than putting a uh, conversation in your video game about the weather. We set up a booth. We set up a booth in front of the medical library, the way we did last time. 
but despite our efforts, no one wanted to cooperate and gave us a blood sample. We took a break and had lunch at the cafeteria and tried again, but everyone walked by quickly and no one showed any interest. Boo, all these selfish people. I only need 10 cc of blood. That's not much to ask for, is it? The writers are trying to be relatable? If we're going to break the rules anyway, maybe we should have stuck a flyer to the bulletin board. It's, it's no use, Xian-chan. All the bulletin boards change their flyers so quickly. I'm sure they would have noticed our poister. Po poister. Our poister. Our poister wasn't authorized, you see? Yeah. I'm sure... I'm sure they would have noticed our poster wasn't authorized, and they would have ripped it off. We could use SNS. We lost most of our followers since IMA started, remember? That's because you kept on posting dirty jokes, and each time you did, you tagged me, and now both of us. It's because of IMA! It's because of IMA! Yes, sir. I nodded. Hey, I'm still a follower. I'm always anticipating what you'd post next. We both shivered in horror. Yuta, can you figure out which is her account? You've got less followers than I do. Surely you could figure it out. Sorry, Fuma. I don't have a clue. Damn it. I guess we should have blocked all the new followers since spring. That's useless, both of you. I'm using an anonymous account that neither of you could know about. You can't hide. <laughs> I'm just going to sit back and observe. Besides, Fumakun, 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 you love getting your posts reposted, so there's no way you can lock your account, is there? No! Togi-chan, Togi-chan, Chi-chan's being scary. That girl is a potential stalker, I tell you. I heard that, and if you've got time to make useless talk, go find our sample. Yes, your majesty. Ui, I just need one sample. Can't we find one single gullible soul willing to get tricked? People don't come near you because you think that way. It shows. I know. That's why I'm using Kayan chan as bait, aren't I? But nobody's going. Should I have worn more revealing clothes? No, we don't need to get you sick, like someone I know. Achoo. Personally, I'm not adverse to the idea. Rumor, you are the fucking worst. If it ever happens, I'll take enough blood samples off you so you won't have enough to circulate down there as a safety precaution. That's a hell of a threat. I, I was just kidding. We've got... Oh, hang on. Somehow I've activated autoplay. Stop that. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I was just kidding. We've got to find someone. I don't want to think I sacrificed my arms for nothing. Evening was drawing near, just as the girls had predicted. Dark clouds began to gather in the west sky. It hadn't rained yet, but it could start raining any time. <laughs> okay, um, and with that screen, I need to go get some more water, because my... My current uh, drink has run out, so I will be back in just a few minutes. Uh, anyone who's been around long enough, now is a good time to uh, get up, stand up, stand up for your rights, take a walk around. Um, don't do that, whatever I did. But, uh, you know, get up, get some food. And, Drain uh, the pee pee! Anything else you need to take care of? Hey there, babe. Wanna get poked? I think the way Kayan chan cat calls is a problem, too. Kurumi-san had turned out to be a tall, slender woman. Oh, Kurumi-san had called out, not turned out. Kurumi-san had called out to a tall, slender woman. She was on her way back from the medical library. She had short red hair and had headphones over her ears. She strode away very quickly. Ooh, hello. You're new. Ooh, and this music's new too. Let me turn that up. My headset. Oh yeah. I can dance to this.
Hmm. Maybe she didn't hear me. Hello? Hi. You there? What? The woman finally took off her earphones and faced our way. She had an intimidating glare. Kurumi-san froze for a moment. Um, we're students and medics. And we're looking for people that could provide us with some blood samples. We were hoping if you could cooperate. Sorry, I'm not interested. Please, we haven't found anyone willing to help, though we've been standing here since morning. What is this expression here? What are you doing with your face? Why, why is your mouth like that? Kurumi-san said, half in tears as she ran after the woman who was trying to walk away. The woman glanced at Kurumi-san's helpless face and softened her expression. It was a small change, but I thought it changed the impression she projected entirely. If I help you, does that mean your job is done? Uh, yeah! Alright, then I'll hurry up and get it over and done with. You mean... I'll help. Where am I supposed to go? Oh, um, r right there, over at the bench. That will certainly get things over and done with quickly. We, we take our safety precautions seriously. It will be done hygienically, so there's no risk of any infection. Really? I have a lot of questions, but I won't ask. Kozuki-san handed her a consent form, and she signed her name easily. Kirei Suze. Kirei Suze. Kirei Suza was her name. Her clothes were splattered with red paint, which made her look like she had emerged from a murder scene. I guessed that she was in art. You've got your own reasons, don't you? You all don't look bad, so I'll help. Just don't make it hurt, okay? I can assure you that it won't hurt at all. I glanced at Togi-san, who was on standby. I wasn't sure if I looked convincing. I'll watch the area here. You watch if people are coming our way. We could, int we could get troublesome. It could get troublesome if we found out. I whispered in Fumi's ear. Oh, it would have been nice to know that we were whispering before I said the whole line. And he stood guard with Kurumi-san and Kozuki-san to make sure no one came our way. Behind me, Toki-san was chatting with Hirei-san as uh, she made preparations. I know I shouldn't say this, but you sure are a weird one to agree to this. Are you sensitive to alcohol? No, I'm not. I mean, we must look suspicious to you. I don't know why, but somehow I thought you all looked lonely. As if you've all been abandoned by people that you love. All five of you. And they... You look alright. I thought it was a rare sight. Aren't you a sharp one? Was it compassion? It's going to hurt just a little. I wouldn't say compassion, but when I saw you... I thought your eyes were similar to mine. That it loves the color red. It's especially obvious now that you're watching that cylinder. But your red is different from mine. It's like you prefer your canvas to be made of human flesh, and you're interested in the red that lies underneath when it's torn. Blood red. Yep, she's just straight up calling her a vampire, I think. <laughs> That's the very next line. You're like a vampire. I'm not talking about your looks. I'm talking about who you are. I'm curious. What are you going to use my blood for? Done. Press on the gauze for a while, if you please. The consent form said you would answer any questions I had about the experiment. If you uh, aren't feeling faint, please get up and leave. Hmm. Did I hit a nerve? Who cares? Thanks for your cooperation. Togi-san said, and got up somewhat aggressively. She left the tools lying around and marched off. I'm sorry, she usually doesn't behave that way. Looks like being called a vampire, uh, really annoy her. I apologized on her behalf to Kiri-san, who looked stunned. I'm, I'm sorry too. I'm not very good with words. I tend to rub people up the wrong way. You tend to rub people up the wrong way? 
Okay. I guess I shouldn't have used the word vampire. Well, she does look like one after all. We've called her that jokingly before, but even then she didn't get that mad. Hey, TG and co, good to see you. Hi, everyone. Hi, uh, BLXX, uh, Devilbird, uh, MP MPR, who we got? Who we got? MPR, uh, GG, Ellis, uh, Devilbird, MBH. Oh, for fuck's sake, game. Stop that. Why are you... Shouldn't be, um... Hey, thanks for the follow, uh, Aqua. Aqua Ace, uh, GG. Uh, Demondra... Hi, uh, Elbert Rush, Sean Black. Hey, Demondra, thank you for the follow as well. Thanks, everyone. Some of some of us are drunk. Oh, okay. Uh, Havoc, hi. <laughs> Thanks, Addy. <laughs> Just ban everyone. Uh, okay, hang on. Let me. I've accidentally scrolled past some of the wording, so we've missed a little bit of story there. Um, that's nothing. That's because oh, nothing. It isn't something I should stick my head into. Okay, so that's that's the only line we missed. <laughs> Devil gonna defend. <laughs> I'm on an adventure! I missed the funny, did I? What did I miss? Tell me, Devil Bad. And uh, thank you, uh, Hattie, for. Uh, now I've resized the goddamn game. Uh, thank you, Hattie, for that. Uh, uh, Video command. Uh, let me appear on screen so people can see what I look like normally. Uh, clearly, the mods ne here need uh, educating on how to welcome new people. Uh, someone said that in uh, I don't know TJs. Any I TJs? But I was, was never there. there. I don't know what Mars is And I was never there They were not new? Oh, okay. Uh, always nice to have a little sing-along. Uh, you can type uh, exclamation commands to see all the different commands that are available. You don't know what their problem is? Okay, weird. Very strange. Why does the game keep getting resized? I don't want that. Oh, I'm good and lubed. Uh, thanks, NPR, for making sure everyone's nice and lubed. <laughs> and of course, the spank command. And now it be. Oh, that was the uh, noise. Uh, I think that's also uh, randomized under the oo command. Oo woo? Oh, that was uh, Astrid, I think. You want me to play it? <laughs> I don't know how to. And, uh, yep, you, someone's found the Lazy Kate's command. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a mess this is. Of course, the devil bird naturally ends up um, spanking um, TG. You want me to play it? <laughs> I don't know how to. <laughs> oh, and devil bird's now spanking Big Hattie. My lord, devil bird. I don't have a hydrate command. I don't know what kind of stream you think this is, where we have disgusting things like hydrate commands. like my harem of babes to grow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> ah! 
<laughs> oh, and it even made Bugatti. <laughs> oh, but HR's now gonna get involved. That's a problem. I'm not sure what Big uh, Bruxus is <laughs> celebrating it about, but. <laughs> Why is it just Big Hattie? What has happened? It's not supposed to target just Big Hattie, but <laughs> that's what it's doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, what a what a mess. Let me explore the flesh mounds. And of course Devil Bird has to go explore the flesh mounds. Wow, what a mess. This is <laughs> Alright, shall we try and continue on with the story? <laughs> yes, that the cringe command is specifically for today. Uh, in case we ever encounter any cringe, be sure to have the cringe command ready. <laughs> I don't even know what that one said. And talk right over the top of it. Uh, quite a lot of the commands are randomized, so I, I, you never quite know what you're going to get. <laughs> I didn't even know that I had fart set to do anything. I guess it's set to the same command as booty, by the sounds of it. <laughs> it must have... Uh, must be an alternate that I set. <laughs> ah, yeah, there we go. There's the coveted uh, um, double targeting where you yourself spank yourself. There are supposed to be um, ones where you do spank yourself that I wrote out properly, but for some reason, I didn't know at the time when I was writing them that you could also accidentally end up targeting yourself. So there's like double the amount of spanking yourself. <laughs> Uh, I, I'll apologize when I next see her around, uh, but do you mind telling her I said sorry too? Just let her know. I do feel bad about it. Of course. I'm really sorry she stormed off after you were so kind to help us too. It's all right. The weather doesn't look that wonderful anyway. I would have been bored. Besides, I got this. She held up the chocolate Kurumi-san gave her and grinned. My friends, my friends say it's going to rain later. Do you have an umbrella? <laughs> oh yeah, there's a video game. Yes, sometimes we play video games here. Uh, what are we calling this one? Um, I don't know. She has red hair, apparently. Apparently this, whatever this is, this hair is apparently enough to be called red. She's got red paint splattered on her, and she wears red overalls and red headphones. Bloody Mary. Okay, Bloody Mary it is. <laughs> it's full of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 sound effects. This song seems to be specific to this character. It only started playing, like, this is the first time I think I've heard it, and it, it only started playing when this character showed up. Uh, my friends say it's going to rain later. Do you have an umbrella? Is it really? Well, I better get going then. I don't know why she's suddenly turning British. She didn't sell off this British. See you around. Good luck with your experiment. I haven't really found her voice yet. Kiri-san gave us a wave and ran off toward the School of Art and Design. Oh, Times Goblin didn't say stop today. Well, keep going, Devil Bird. Uh, I would have liked to talk with her more the next time I saw her around, but that by then she would be a stranger again. Okay, so for those of us just joining, the story is that everyone seems to forget us the second they stop paying attention to us. It only seems to happen in this university, and it's like us and a group of like five, four friends are stuck in this world where everyone forgets us basically every day. We've been trying to figure out how to do it. We've already completed one route, um, which ended with some time travel. So I'm suspecting we're gonna have to do every single route before we get to the true storyline. That's like you, but everywhere IRL. <laughs> now that we got our sample, I guess we better go find Togi-chan. This is the one talking, even though she's not the only one with their mouth open. Uh, this is Kayan-chan. We call her, we believe she's a werewolf, but we also call her um, uh, belt boob or boob belt for uh, obvious reasons. This is Fuma, our best friend. He's the worst. And uh, this is Shion, who I believe may be a zombie, 
what we'd like to call either beret or a fupa sweater. Or just fupa. Well, because of uh, whatever's happening down here. Can I? Does H work? No, it doesn't work. Okay. It's not that. Not done on Rempai, I guess. Boo belt. <laughs> yes, boo belt and uh, fupa. Wonderful! Extra work! Probably should have done that in a less excited tone. Togi-san, she's gone. I called out, and Togi-san came out from hiding. You knew? If you were active enough to go far, our lives would be a lot easier. Kozuki-san noticed too. Yes, I did. Bona? Bona? I don't remember receiving a bona from you. Big Hattie, when did you give me a bona? Oh, wait, no, I remember now. I do remember your bona, of course. Now I remember. <laughs> yes, no, I don't think I did add it. Oh, but yes, I do remember it now. I do have a bona command plan, but uh, I'm not sure I'm going to use your sound effect. I have a better sound effect in mind. Um, hmm, what a beautiful relationship we have. Oh, and this is uh, Pointy Tooth, also known as Togi, also known as Vampire. <laughs> well, Devil Bird, are you going to think about your consequences of your actions? Yeah, yes, I do, I do remember it now, Big Hattie, yes. Uh, what a beautiful relationship we have. What happened over there? You left Kiri-san in shock. Hang on, I'm gonna drink. My mouth's drying up now. Sorry, but please, don't ask. I won't force you to tell me if you don't want to talk about it. Then let's go home. I don't like rain. Because she's a vampire. Running water. Vampires can't cross it. That includes in rain. Oh, also, um, uh, Devil Bird, we found a- we were in her house before, um, because I think we're actually doing Togi's route now, I think we're gonna end up falling in love with her or whatever, um, and we found a broken mirror, like, the mirror in her bathroom is, like, completely broken, and, but apparently she still does, like, I'm on an adventure! Apparently she still does her, um, routine there, so I'm guessing she doesn't ever use mirrors because, like, she doesn't have a reflection, is my guess. Oh, and also, um, Redhead Girl straight up called Toki, uh, a vampire right before you guys raided. Um, which is why, uh, uh, she ran off in the first place. For some reason, having a stranger call her a vampire really upset her for some reason. So I'm reckoning she actually might legitimately be a vampire, because we didn't find I'm out- I'm on an adventure! <laughs> oh dear. Time Goblin is going to test if there's a cooldown, is there? Is he? That's, um... That's going to be a problem, because I know for a fact that there isn't a cooldown. I wonder if you can get it to play over the top of itself. Or whether it'll just, like, restart the video. <laughs> I'm on an adventure! Well, then, I wonder if there's, like, a, a 30 second thing for, like, not repeating I'm yourself. I'm on an adventure! <laughs> You guys are never going to see the game ever again. <laughs> then let's go home. I don't like rain. A drop of cold water hit my cheek just as Togi-san finished her sentence. <laughs> you, you need to send me the pockets. Oh, the let's go gamers. Uh, one. You're just going to keep pushing through. <laughs> I wonder why the LJ one didn't go off. Did I change... Is that, does the LJ one still? Oh, it might not still exist anymore. I might have uh, incorporated it in just to the uwu command. <laughs> Time Goblin got himself. It's the ultimate form of friendship. <laughs> and it turned you on. I didn't even read that bit. You, you spanked yourself and it turned you on. <laughs> uh, just as Toki San finished a sentence. Oh no, it started to rain. The light rain turned into a heavy downpour in no time. I hope Kiri-san got back in time. 
Let's find some shelter. An umbrella won't do as much good with rain as heavy as this. And I doubt it would go on for long. <laughs> Squeal like a pig. Wow. We stayed under the roof of the medical library for an hour, and the rain gradually softened to a light drizzle. I hope it will stop altogether. The weather report says it's going to stay this way till midnight. Harumi-san commented as she looked at our phone. Hmm, maybe it's better for us to just make a run for it. Let's go. Okay, so she can pass through running water. But yeah, running water is definitely part of vampire lore. It's not as common now. Like, this town has been replaced by holy water. But uh, it was said that, like, uh, in some medieval lore, that uh, vampires couldn't cross running streams and things like that. And that, that's kind of where the whole water thing kind of came from. Uh, it's kind of similar to the also the rule that like vampires have to count anything that you throw down. Like uh, if you throw down a bunch of beans, they have to stop and count them all. Some of the more weirder stuff that kind of got left by the wayside of vampire lore. This is bad. We stood by the road, mindless of the rain soaking into our clothes. The loop road had turned into something akin to a muddy river. A packed bus sloshed by, spraying muddy water. We tried getting on a bus too, but it was packed with students that were trying to shelter themselves from the rain. During this season, the trains get stuck with dried leaves. What more, it was a pretty heavy downpour, so I suppose that this was inevitable. Oh, Devilbird's the one being spanked now. And Bruxus is the one doing the spanking. How the turntables have existed. Um, it looks bad, but it's just water on the road. I'm sure we could make our way through it, although our shoes may get wet. Yeah, we're already soaked anyway. Ah, I want to dry myself in a warm place. As long as it's thuddy, not stingy? Oh, okay. That's uh, quite a connoisseur's opinion there, devil bird of, of Spanx. You want, more of a, you want more of a thump to it and less of a... This of a whip. You want more elbow action than wrist action. Uh, I want to dry myself in a warm place. Not you, Sniff. Togi-san, are you all right? You've just recovered from a cold. I'm all right, but can I borrow a handkerchief? My nose is running. Ha ha. Phrasing? What, what phrasing? I, I know what I said, Big Hattie, and I stand by it. Also speak for yourself. Big Hattie just learned about <laughs> things about LJ. <laughs> it's more in the implement than the action. Okay, oh, okay, so we're, we're bringing implements into this now, are we? I didn't realize that was an option. Maybe I should add some more commands that involve implements. Yeah, it's damp, though. Thanks. Togi san reached out for it, but she stopped. Sorry, but do you have another in a different design? What? What's wrong with our handkerchief that you can't use it? <laughs> Hardware. <laughs> You're more of an elbow than wrist guy? Okay. <laughs> design? What do you... Uh, Okay, I'm going to read this, but this is also a completely baffling sentence. Togi-san, having a J in a handkerchief is pretty common for a guy taking a science degree, you know? Why would that ever be the case? What, what about having, getting a science degree would make you get a checkered handkerchief over any other kind of handkerchief? But, okay, so Togi-san can't take out a handkerchief because it's checkered? Is this some obscure piece of vampire lore that I'm not aware of? Here, use mine. Thanks, Chion chan I'll wash it and give it back later. Togi-san took Kozuki-san's plain handkerchief and blew her nose hard. Besides, you can't cross the road, can you, Mayazumi-san? Oh, here we come to the running water thing. There's a bus stop with a roof nearby. Let's sit and wait there. 
If we wait long enough, I'm sure we can catch a bus we could ride. Good idea. Thanks. Ah, I wonder if, um... I wonder if we're fi gonna find out in this route that she really is a vampire. I know we've been, like, guessing at it this entire time, but it l looks like we might actually legitimately be about to find out. Hmm? Kurumi-san looked as if she wanted to ask a question, but Kozuki-san silenced her by bringing a finger up to her lips. It seems like, uh, Shion might actually know that, uh, Togi is a vampire already. Uh, we watched another packed bus go by, and the next came, almost just as full. I guess there's only enough space for one person left. Let's wait. No, you get on first, Togi-san. You're still recovering. We can't have you wait out here in damp clothes. But... Go on, it will be a while before a bus that will take all of us comes. You're holding the bus up, get on it. As Togi-san turned around to look at the driver, I pushed her in. The door closed, and I could see her yelling at me, but I pretended I couldn't hear her and wave with a smile. <laughs> That's pretty brutal, forcing your friend- I'm on an adventure! Just throwing your friend onto a bus. What if it wasn't even the right bus? Like, you're just sending her off somewhere completely random in the rain. Good. Yukon, that was pretty forward of you. Was that all right, though? I'll have to apologize to her later, but I had to do this, or we'd never get to hear about her problems. Right. Kozuki-san, you couldn't talk because she was there, but now that she's gone, I hope you can. Don't pretend you don't know anything. It's not even 10 a.m. in Germany? That can't be right. Oh, I suppose it would be, yeah. Yeah, I suppose if it's like, what, almost coming up 11 in Helsinki. Uh... I said pointedly, and Kozuki-san shrugged, as if, to say, as if to say she didn't have any choice. To be honest, I think it's something all... Uh, you all should know, to make things better for her, apart from the fact she won't be happy about it. Especially you, Kiriyakun. You mean... It's about her illness. This isn't about her sick personality or her morbid tendencies, is it? I'm serious, although it might sound just as unbelievable as what you just described. You set an alarm so you wouldn't too miss too much of the stream? Aw, that's nice of you, uh, Big Hattie. Didn't have to do that. But, uh, I'm glad that you... I'm glad that you value my stream a little bit over, uh, getting enough sleep. Stop clinging to the past. <laughs> uh... Is what you just described. You all know about vampires, don't you? Here we go. Here it comes. So glad you're here for this, Devil Bird. We're gonna find out the truth once and for all. Chi-chan, you aren't going to say Togi-chan is a real vampire, are you? Of course not. She's human. But her illness does cause symptoms that are very similar to vampiric traits. So, she's, I'm not saying she's a vampire, but she's a vampire. It might sound unbelievable, but it's possible. There have been cases where unknown illnesses are the basis of myths and horror stories, with added exaggeration. Mayazumi-san's illness is an infection that comes from a strain discovered in Romania. Wow, they went all out with this. Romania. A thousand years ago, her great-grandmother is Romanian. Is that how you spell Romanian? Okay. No, no, she didn't burn in sunlight. She didn't seem to actually worry about the rain. So apparently she couldn't cross the road because of the running water, but the rain falling wasn't... Uh... Enough? You need an editor? Yeah, there is definitely some awkward translations at the very, very least. Like the fact that they kept saying that they're in medic, instead of like saying that they were medical students. And vampires can't eat real food. I'm not sure if that's ever been a big part of the lore. Like, maybe later uh, versions of it. 
that they can't eat real food, but um, I know eating the heart was an important part of uh, killing a vampire. You'd uh, dig up the body, and if the heart was still there, that was a sign that they were a vampire, and the only way to defeat them was to uh, eat the heart, which wasn't a great idea, because typically what they assumed were vampires were people who just died of tuberculosis. Uh, I think it was tuberculosis. Yeah, TB, yeah. And this one's a fan of tomato juice. Um, Romanian. It infects through blood from mother to child, but as the years went by, the symptoms lessened. Mayazumi san is able to live perfectly normal lives now. Oh, so they used to be even more vampiric than she currently is. Consumption, yeah. C consumption is TB, right? Tuberculosis? Consumption, they're synonymous? Uh. But when it came to her, the symptoms all came back. Oh, okay. Basically, she's paranoid, phobic, allergic, and has cognitive impairment. <laughs> what? How does a genetic disease cause such specific things? Paranoia, okay, maybe. But phobias? That doesn't seem right. Allergies, sure, okay, I can believe that. And cognitive impairment. What does that even mean? Cognitive impairment. Is she... Is it a developmental uh, problem, or... I, I, I can't even begin to fathom what that means. You're allergic, so you, you're a vampire? Yeah, that's exactly true. I mean, there is... Uh, well, ra rabies causing hydrophobia is... Well, rabies is hydrophobia. You're thinking of aquaphobia, um, which is fear of water. Hydrophobia is just another word for rabies because of, it causes aquaphobia. Due to, um, yeah, impairment, a.k.a. slow. Um, which is always hilarious if someone uses hydrophobia incorrectly. Like that, I remember reading one book where like, it was describing the scene of being like in a public pool and... Um, they describe one child as screaming from hydrophobia. And I'm like, that child has rabies? <laughs> it was such a weird background detail that clearly they meant just the child was afraid of the water, but <laughs> they used the wrong word and made it seem much more horrific than it was. Yeah, they, 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 sometimes they call it like, uh, in the, the old Southern like dialects, I think in old yellow, they call it like hydrophobies. That dog has hydrophobies. Yeah, but it, it causes a fear of water due to the fact that you um, begin to salivate uncontrollably and, and basically start drowning in your own um, uh, saliva, basically. It's uh, pretty freaking horrific. Seems like an awful, awful way to go. So make sure to always get yourself um, checked out properly if you ever come into contact with any animal that might have rabies or any ra animal in ge general. Any kind of scratch or even if there isn't a scratch, better safe than sorry. Uh, cognitive impairment. To describe it in detail, she has a strong attraction to blood. Is insomniac. In is insomniac? Is an insomniac, and is afraid to of crosses, water, and vegetables with strong aromas. So she just believes she's a vampire. That sounds more like a mental disorder than a genetic one. This is, sounds more like Renfield's disease or something. Strong attraction to blood. I mean, that's, I'm sure that's got a, a word, some kind of philia uh, about it. I mean, that's not that uncommon, honestly. Uh, insomnia? Lots of people are insomniac. Uh, okay, fear of crosses water and vegetables. Those are pretty specific. But if you're told that you come from a long line of like people with a genetic disease that causes them to be vampires, it, could, it would be pretty normal, especially if you're a child being told all this, to develop these phobias. What if she's genetically predisposed to getting that mental disorder? Yeah, yeah, that's certainly a possibility. You're allergic to stuff, I hate strong aromas, and I'm allergic to a lot. You're a vampire. Yep. Vampire confirmed. Everyone, burn the vampire. And nocturnal, yes! Yes! <laughs> you don't go out in sunlight. You're always up at night. Oh dear. Oh, you, you, that's why you mentioned allergic twice? <laughs> you, you meant to say one of, um, one of those was insomnia. <laughs> I thought you were just like putting a lot of emphasis. <laughs> You've been drinking. She's also heavily allergic to silver, 
and mildly allergic to sunlight, and she can't recognize herself in the mirror. She can't... Re okay, so she's got, like, face blindness, or not... Some form of face blindness. Uh... Mildly allergic to sunlight, that is a real thing. Normally it's caused by medications and stuff, but you can definitely be um, allergic to sunlight. Uh, typically that just means that you burn way really easily, like dangerously easy uh, in sunlight. It can cause like itching and stuff. I, I've um, suffered from that in the past from certain medications, and that problem hasn't really gone away even after I got off those medications. Inappropriate, inappropriate behavior. Devil Red and Bruxis, inappropriate. You can't target that. It's always random. And also, did you know it's impossible to spank me? No matter how many times you try it, you will never be able to spank me. Uh, and also, allergies to silver. That's not that common. Typically, if you actually are allergic to silver, it typically means that you're, the silver that you're reacting to is actually got um, some other things mixed in with it. Like, uh, I think zinc is a common one uh, to have. Uh, nickel. Yeah. Ah, yeah, that's probably what I was thinking of. Yeah, you've typically got something mixed in with the silver, and that's what you're reacting to, not uh, the pure uh, silver. Although I don't know that it's impossible to be uh, allergic to silver. <laughs> Your goats. <laughs> you have fainting. Oh, you, know, you have fainting goats. Oh, that's great. I love them. It's so, so interesting that they get so excited. They just fall over. They just like get paralyzed. Such an interesting little creatures. <laughs> Bruxus, why are you spanking everyone? Why has Bruxus become everybody's go-to spank person? Myotonia uh, congenita. So it's congenital and it causes something to do with the, uh, like the toning of the muscles. <laughs> Bruxus is doling them out. What are you apologizing for? Bruxus, Bruxus chose to do it willingly to you, uh, Time Goblin. All you did was ask. No, oh, you just read it. <laughs> and yeah, so she's also got some kind of form where she can't recognize herself in mirrors. I don't know why they would explain why she would then break the mirror. Maybe she got mad at it one day. <laughs> it's 4 a.m. You can only do so much. <laughs> what, she spanked you on the shins? <laughs> Drunk and chaotic. <laughs> wow. Sounds familiar? I'm not surprised that people would misunderstand her. But she isn't immortal, nor does she have wings. Oh, wings aren't something I typically associate with vampires. Like, I guess sometimes they're show depicted with, like, bat wings, but it's not my first thought. She can't transform into bats or wolves, and she certainly doesn't sleep in a coffin. But, that, I mean, that's just a choice. Like, anyone can sleep in a coffin. That wouldn't make, make you a vampire or not. She might feel a bit ill when she's out in the sunlight too long, but she won't turn to ashes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you gonna go to bed? Okay, TG. Thank you so much for the raid. It was wonderful. Um, I guess, I guess, I mean, most of the people here came in with you. I think it was only two people were here before the raid, but I will give you a quick shout out regardless, just because it's the right thing to do, TG. Um, but yeah, I also have my own shout out command. Uh, there we go. Hopefully that'll work in a second. Yeah, there we go. But yeah, thank you for so much for the raid, and it's always lovely to see you here. And it was great to see you get spanked by everyone. And to also do some spanking of your own. Oh yes, and uh, Merry Christmas. Yes, of course. I forget, because I don't celebrate, but it is that very nearly that time. Oh, a nearby stranger devil bird. You're getting bold with this. You're involving the general public.
Okay, back to the game. There is a game that sometimes occasionally happens on this stream. Uh, she might feel a bit ill when she's out in the sunlight too long, but she won't turn to ashes. And there's one more symptom, but it's not a problem any longer. I won't talk about it until she does. <laughs> this is way too entertaining, don't give you toys. <laughs> Thuddy whip. <laughs> Obscure please add us from the late scene. Well, welcome to the stage of Thuddy Whip. Uh, it's an illness that runs only in her family, so there isn't a name to it. That's why she finds it hard to talk about what's wrong. What do you mean? If Even if it's only in her family, you think a scientist somewhere along the line would like describe it in the literature and give it a name? <laughs> there is a name. It's called vampirism. <laughs> You're a vampire. She's had a hard childhood because of it. If a doctor could give her proof it was an illness, maybe things would have been easier for her. What do you mean? There's no proof? Then what is any of this? What do you mean? <laughs> the allergies alone would be provable, would they not? Maybe that's why Togi-san decided to be a doctor. But why did she tell you, Kozuki-san? During the time I was away, Meizumi-san found me. I couldn't go home yet, so I interrogated her as a way of defending myself. We all have secrets, don't we? If you don't want me to know, leave me alone. That's what I said. I feel terrible I did that, but I had no other choice. But Meizumi-san was relentless. She then told me her secret and demanded that I tell her mine, now that she had opened up. So I offered her a different deal, because I couldn't afford to be found out yet. A different deal? Oh, that was a bit too high, bitch. Uh, Meizumi-san's symptoms go away for a while, once her urges are met. Her urges? Oh my. You mean... I mean, if she has a taste of blood, she's fine. So I gave her my blood. Um, okay. Um. I'm just going to take a moment. Just We're just going to sit here and think about that. It's a humble community, all thanks to you, Big Hattie. I, I don't know how... <laughs> she is a vampire, damn it. <laughs> I... I mean, that's, that's going to be purely psych psychological. There's no reason that would affect... Allergies in any way, I don't think. Drinking someone else's blood? What? Why would something psychological affect her allergies? Unless she gets so stressed about it that it, uh, you know, weakens her. I suppose that would be possible if she's an insomniac. But then again, she's also known for sleeping for long periods of time. That's the one other thing we know about her. Is that like she sleeps through the mornings? So it's not that she doesn't get sleep, it's that she just sleeps at inconvenient times. She's just nocturnal. Uh, so I gave her my blood. No wonder! Togi chan had been pretty uh, energetic ever since you've returned, Shi chan. I thought it was because she was happy to see you. I guess that wasn't all. I think that's why she reacted the way she did when Kiri-san called her a vampire. When she was back home, her family would give her blood regularly, but she hadn't had a single taste ever since she moved here. Hypersomnia happens too? Yeah, that's, that's definitely true. But, um, her family would give her blood? Like, their own blood? Or was her family procuring blood for her? So she was able to believe in herself that she wasn't a vampire while she was here. But after having a taste of my blood, I guess she started to doubt herself. She's feeling insecure. This is, um... There is, uh... Mental disorders about, like, the idea that you don't have enough blood in your body, and that often can lead to, you know, drinking either animal blood or, like, injecting it. And, stuff. and that can be very dangerous uh, for people who suffer such delusions, because, you know, you're not supposed to inject animal blood. Uh, it can lead to all sorts of blood toxicity 
and stuff like that. And of course, there's like Renfield disease, which I think is similar idea that you don't have enough blood. Um, and it also can um, lead to like eating uh, small animals or even insects. Similar to, you know, the character Renfield. That one is right there with stuff crawling under her skin. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. She believes she wasn't a vampire. Yeah. Of course, she isn't a vampire. There's no mistake about that. But why did she take your blood if, when she knew about her illness? <laughs> Vampires can't go out in the sunlight. They're just using us for the D. Uh, it's always, always the case, isn't it, Devil Bird? When it all comes down to it, people only just want you for your D. Ever see what happens when uh, mismatched blood types uh, mix? Mm, you know, honestly, I don't think I have, but I'm assuming it's not good. Oh, yes, yes, that's uh, quite common, obviously, in, um, like, me uh, meth and stuff like that. Uh, the, the, that kind of uh, psychosis. Uh, it's got a specific term that I did know at one stage in my life, but I've forgotten it. But yeah, yeah, that's a very common kind of uh, tactile. It's a tactile hallucination, basically. Uh, and why did she take her blood when she knew about her illness? You'll have to repent for that. It's your fault, after all. That was completely unexpected. I was at a loss for words. Oh, uh, all right. This is all I can tell you. You'll have to ask her yourself if you want more information. Does anyone else have any questions? I get the symptoms of Togi Chan's condition, but what about the other symptoms? Why she always looks so ill? That's just her personality, isn't it? Tozuki san replied easily. I felt the tension ease around us. That's a relief. That means even without her condition, Togi chan's just the way I knew her to be. But she didn't have to hide it. She could have told us herself. We would have accepted her the way she is. <laughs> She's a vampire. Well, we listened to Xion Chan's explanation because she broke the subject seriously. But imagine Togi Chan San talking this way about talking about it the way she usually does. I think we would have all thought it was a joke. That would have hurt her. If she had put on a serious face and talked to us about it, that would be so unlike her. I think whichever way, it would have been stressful for her. So I think it's for the best that we found out this way. That's surprisingly insightful of you, Fuma. Well, once you're not being the worst. She will need someone to follow up and console her, though. Thankfully, we've got the perfect guy for the job. Okay, okay. That's the only thing I'm good at doing anyway. I wonder if there's a way to cure Toki-chan's condition. Well, it sounds like it's a large collection of different things that apparently have a genetic basis, so I can't imagine that there would be a Unless you're talking about something, like, radical and honestly beyond our capabilities at the moment, like gene therapy. Uh... She said she was going to find a way someday, although it might be a long way in the future. A long way in the future. Time travel? kurumi sound whispered and stared at her phone. Again, tell me at the beginning of the sentence that it's in a whisper, because I can't read the sentence properly when you tell me after. You're heckin' tired, still kind of day-walking? Kayan chan don't tell me you're... Look, the bus is here. Looks like one of us would fit in. Hehe, <laughs> of course, there's only one person here that needs to get on straight away. Go on, get on! Kurumi san said as she clapped her hand on my shoulder with a smile. Thanks, I really mean it. Just tell her to pull herself up by the bootstraps? And that it's all in her head, yes. <laughs> That, that would definitely help. That would definitely ease the situation, Big Hattie. Uh, hang on. I'm going to mute my mic for a second while I uh, get back down onto the floor because it's getting too sweaty up here in the chair.
Okay, I'm back. Open the door, get on the floor. Everybody walk the dinosaur. Boom, boom, shakalaka laka, boom, 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 shakalaka, boom, boom. Okay. Let's all get together tomorrow. Same place, same time. I waved back to her and got on the packed bus. You're late. I was getting tired of waiting. You know, honestly, it was nice just to have a conversation without having to do your dramatic voice, Turkey. <laughs> it always does a number. It's like the fastest voice to dry out my throat. I was getting tired of waiting. Togi-san opened the door immediately when I pressed the doorbell. She was probably waiting right behind the door all this time. Sorry, we couldn't find a bus that had space. I came right after you, though. Really? You mean you left Kayan-chan and Xian-chan shivering at the bus stop? Isn't that awfully unkind of you? Ugh, Togi-san, what do you want me to do? I've got an idea of what I want you to do, heart. What? What are you thinking of? I tensed up. Uh, um, welcome home, darling? Honey, I'm home. <laughs> Togi-san chuckled happily and walked back to the sofa bed. Oh no! How could I forget? I should have done the classic, Do you want dinner? Do you want to take a bath? Or would you rather? And they cost the last part of that sentence is me. Japanese wife question. There's dinner? No. You've made the bath? No. But you're welcome to make any requests if you want to, honey. Okay, okay. Next time, get all three options ready and try again. Although, if she'd gotten the first two ready, I doubted she'd have the energy to do the third. So it was pretty much an impossible task. You know, she doesn't actually have to do anything, you know. Sometimes sometimes she can just lay back. Yuta, I mean, I, I don't know how much experience with that, but you know. Uh, if you fall asleep, uh, you appreciate us and happy marriage. Well, same to you, uh, Devil Bird. And, uh, you know, if you if you end up falling asleep, uh, good night. And uh, I hope you have pleasant dreams. Um... <laughs> What's the matter? Got a, fe got a fever again? No, I was just happy to think that there's going to be a next time. Sometimes you're unexpectedly cute, Togi-san. Oh, <laughs> TG's still on the possible. This is a candidate, is he? I wonder how that works. I wonder if it's... Yeah, because he's not... Oh, no, he's still uh, on the list of uh, potential chatters. I wonder how that works. What it picks it out of. Maybe he's just left it running while he does other things. Uh, uh, and I'm clicking on the preview screen again instead of the actual game. There we go. Uh -huh. You're going sweet on me, boy. Why the change of heart? I heard about your condition from Kozuki-san. Should I get angry and call her a betrayer next time I see Xion-chan? Or should I thank her for explaining it to you without scaring you away? Or maybe I should apologize for making her explain the dirty stuff. I think you should just behave as usual. That would be the best for all of us. Okay, I guess you're right. I would have preferred you depended on. Uh, I would have preferred you depended on me first. Although Kozuki-san may be more reliable than I am. She said it was my fault that you had to depend on her. Is that true? You mean she told you that too? I think I'd better scold her next time I see her. After all. You don't need to worry about it. I just wanted to share the same world with you all as much as I can. The more I try to avoid blood, the more I become a creature of the night. I become... different. I was afraid of that. You're special to me, but you're not the only one that's special. 
or are you willing to be really special? As in, my one and only. Personally, I think I've already come pretty close to that position, now that I come here every day. I don't know how she interpreted my words. Togi-san simply smiled faintly. Okay, uh, there's a change in scene. I'm gonna take a quick break while I get myself another drink. I just finished off my second bottle of water. So I'll be right back in just a few minutes. Okay, and we're back in. Oh, did I end up? Let me just check. Okay, I did end up taking myself away from game screen. Okay. Hope everyone enjoyed their break. Let's do uh, something to command just before we jump back into the game. Let's give a hug just to everyone who's been here and who's st still around. <laughs> That's fair, everyone. Okay, let's get back into the game. Okay. The next day, when I got to the Hirasuna Community Center, we found the place to be empty. We were almost late since Togi-san took time to get ready, but yet no one was there. Uma and Kurumi-san were usually late, but Kozuki-san was usually ten minutes early. It was strange that she wasn't there. You mean everyone is late? <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. My throat is feeling very sore. Hang on, I'm just gonna mute myself for a second while I cough. Hopefully that's good. You mean everyone is late? Maybe they got tired after the rain last evening. Let's just wait. Someone's bound to turn up. But even after 10 minutes, 20 minutes, nobody showed up. Maybe I should call them. I took out my phone and looked for Fumi's number in my address book. Hmm? I couldn't find his name in the F tab. All the other people starting with F remained, but only Fuma was gone. I had a bad feeling about it, and I looked for Kozuki-san and Kurumi-san as well. Both of them were gone. I didn't delete their numbers. Just yesterday, I had called them before our meeting. Togi-san, did you play with my phone while I slept last night? If it was a prank, it was a bothersome one. But I doubted it would be a bug if only those three specifically disappeared from my phone. Huh? Why would I do that? I didn't think so. Do you mind calling the three for me? It looks like my phone isn't working well. Hmm? All right. She looked suspiciously at me, at me, but took her phone out to do as I requested. Then her expression changed. What is the meaning of this boy? <laughs> I forgot I wrote that. I was in the halfway writing through a, a random timer command uh, last night after um uh, yesterday's stream. And I, um... <laughs> That's not what that's supposed to say. I, uh, I just got tired and, and saved it as it was. Sorry, Leonic, if you see this. It won't stay like that forever. Uh, you mean you two? Something strange. Let's go find them. Dogi-san, you have a car, don't you? Yeah, although I don't drive it much. You go to Kurumi-san's and Kozuki-san's first. You stayed over before, so you know where they live, don't you? <coughs> I'll go search for Fuma in his room. Togi-san nodded, and we separated ways. Uh, can you keep it down a bit? I knocked on Fuma's door repeatedly, when a sleepy-looking student looked out from next door. Sorry, I need to see the guy that lives here. Fuma, do you know where he is? Uh, no. Of course he wouldn't. He was affected by IMA. The person that lives here. The person that lives here. What are you saying? That room has been empty since spring. The guy that was supposed to move in decided not to. What? I tried to gather my thoughts when the phone rang. Yogi-san, how was it? They aren't here. Some stranger is living in that place. What's the meaning of this? I don't know what's going on. Yogi-san sounded near tears. Come back. Let's find another way to search for them. 
I'll see you at the cafeteria in the third cluster. As soon as we got to the cafeteria, I opened my laptop. What is this expression? You sound like you were in tears on the phone, and now you're, like, got this smug grin on your face. As soon as I, uh, we got to the cafeteria, I opened my laptop. How are you going to find them? How are you going to find them? I'm going to search for classes they're attending, and we'll go see them directly, in class. That means... I knew what she was about to say. If the three of them had forgotten about our meeting today, and we're attending class right now, but it was better than never seeing them again. Maybe, if we stayed and waited, they would show up eventually, but we had to do something. I opened the browser and keyed in my student identification number and password, and tried accessing the internet. That's funny. I can't access the web. No matter how many times I tried, my password got rejected. What are you doing? Here, let me try. Togi-san took my laptop and keyed in her uh, student identification number. It connected immediately. There you go. That's strange. What? Annoyed that I manage when you're the one that's attending information sciences? I ignored Togi-san's teasing and took out my student ID from my wallet. I looked at my identification code. I knew it. What is it? My identification code ended with 40, but look here. It ends with 39. That's strange. That isn't a number that you mistakenly remember. I can only think of one reason. My identification number has moved up. Do you just think they use an identification number that's just a series of numbers in a row? That seems um, incredibly easy to like uh, break. Like if you were trying to get in somewhere, like using an identification code to enter the student web, Seems like it'd be pretty easy to guess a student's identification number just from knowing a little bit about them. Impossible. Wait, are you all right? You've suddenly gone pale. It's weird that the number on your card changed, but it's not a big deal, is it? It's not about the number. I shouted, almost in tears. Uma's identification was two digits before me. doggy san fell silent as understanding dawned. She then shook her head and as she muttered, that can't be, repeatedly. We rushed towards their classes, as if trying to shake off the dread we felt, but still, we couldn't find them. When night fell, I didn't go back to Togi-san's room, but stayed in front of Puma's room, waiting for his return. Even when the scare I began to fail, even when the sky began to pale, he never returned. Puma, Kurumi-san, and Kozuki-san had probably disappeared from this place since last evening. I'm home. <coughs> Sorry. Wrong voice there. I'm home. Welcome back. Yesterday, we were so happy to have this conversation. But today, we were simply tired out. You couldn't sleep too, huh? Yeah, I couldn't. But I managed to analyze the blood sample while you were away. I could tell from her expression that the results weren't satisfactory. Cheer up. No, it's okay. I don't care about the blood sample. It's not that we didn't learn anything. At least we know my theory was wrong. That's progress, isn't it? I'll believe that you believe that, since you're, uh, sincere. Hmm. Togi-san gave me one of her infamous smiles in response. But when I stayed silent, her expression slowly clouded. In the end, she bit her bottom lip and bowed her head. Togi-san. You don't need to put up a strong face when you're with me. You don't need to pretend you're weak for all that matters either. You don't need to pretend you're weak for all that matters either. I told you. I wouldn't have anything to say if I gave that up. Really? Instead of replying, she kept a faint smile on her face, and a single tear rolled down her cheek. This is such happy music for such a dark and serious uh, conversation as if this was the only way she could express how strong and how weak she was. I'm not so weak that I can't admit my failures, but I'm not so strong that I can't, that I can walk a new path alone. Boy, anything I believe in keeps disappearing one by one. I want to believe that I won't lose anything further, but how do I know for sure? I won't disappear. I believe you, but I can't say that I feel secure. What should I do? 
She looked mischievous for a moment, and then walked close to me. I could smell the faint scent of shampoo from her hair. Time went by so slowly when you weren't here. That's why I had enough time to make dinner. And I was also able to make a bar. You took so much time, I got in first, though. And I'm ready, too. What do you want to do? <laughs> oh my god. Fucking anime. Oh my god. I was not expecting that. I mean, I should have been. <laughs> oh, I should have been expecting it. I wasn't. I really wasn't expecting us to have to make the choice ourselves. I mean, stop. <laughs> uh, I mean, what do we pick, guys? I mean, three options there. I mean, we kind of have to pick the last one, right? I mean, having dinner or a bath, that'd be pretty boring. I mean, how do, we, how do we pick anything different? We've come this far. We might as well go all the way. Hang on, let's, let's make a save here before <laughs> select quit. Let's make a quick save before we make this choice. Uh, I mean, we, we've got to do it. We should cut her. It's anime. I'll have you, Togi-san. Yeah? What was that funny noise you made? It sounded like a failed hiccup. I didn't expect that answer. I haven't even simulated it in my mind. How would I know? <laughs> what do we do from here? Don't ask me. I just use up all my courage giving you my answer. Um, should we kiss then? For the heck of it? Why are they suddenly blushing like... I don't know, children. They're in college, right? What the hell is this? Why is everyone so, like... emotionally underdeveloped in anime? I don't want to kiss you just for the heck of it. Shut up! Nom. She kissed me. I could feel her pointy teeth biting my lower lip. Her kiss was soft, warm, sweet, and slightly prickly. I stood in a daze when she let go. Boom! Ah! Togi-san pushed me down on the sofa bed, sat on me, and pulled my clothes off in a frenzy, and... When we woke up, it was late into the night. Oh, we didn't even get, like, a discretion shot of, like, a flower fading out or something. Unless we literally just passed out, like we were sedated or something. That, that's also a possibility. It was late into the night. Despite taking the relationship to the next level, we spent most of the night simply staying close to each other, as if to make sure the other was there. I can definitely understand that. Once you, it's only you, you and one other person, like alone in the world, basically, I can't imagine ever wanting to let, let that person out of my sight. I'd imagine losing my virginity. <laughs> I would <laughs> Oh boy, I gotta say the sentence out loud. I'd imagine losing my virginity. I would imagine losing my virginity would make me feel grown up. But that would not be further from the truth. In fact, we were like two lost children, not knowing where to go next. Oh, and there wasn't even any music or anything behind that. Oh, great. That's gonna make it really easy to clip. Wonderful. I knew Togi san felt the same. <laughs> Why is everyone so emotionally underdeveloped in anime? Think about the people who, find, who think this stuff is great. Uh, I can't call you my cherry boy anymore, can I? That's the first thing you're going to say after you... That's the first thing you're going to say after you wake up? You're formidable. Should I have apologized first? You don't have to. It was probably for the better that it happened that way. Because, knowing myself, I probably wouldn't have had the courage. I suppose I should apologize for that, too, but I wasn't talking about that. <clears throat> I 
Um, it also occurs to me that if we got straight into uh, getting busy with it, getting jiggy with it, as it were, as the kids say, um, does that mean we just like left whatever she made for dinner, like sitting there to go cold in the bath? I guess the bath's fine to leave sitting around, but I don't know about the food. Togi-san retrieved a small mirror from her desk and placed it in my hand. Why does she have a small mirror? She broke the mirror in her bathroom and she can't see herself in a mirror. Why would she ever buy a small mirror? There. What's this? She looked at me pointedly, as if to urge me to have a look. So I looked in the mirror. Maybe she left a kiss mark somewhere. Togi-san, this? I angled the mirror left and right and tried shifting myself, but I still couldn't find my reflection. I took out my phone and tried looking at my reflection on the shiny black screen, but I could only see the room and not myself. I touched my cheek just to make sure I was solid, and sure enough, I was still there. Why? Kozuki-san didn't get infected when she gave her blood. Because that was one way. Wait, she infected us with her... Illnesses? She didn't think to tell us that that was a possibility? She seems to know that, 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 that this would happen. She willingly infected us. What the fuck? But you had contact with my blood, remember? I felt my face turn hot as I remembered what happened between the sheets. What the fuck happened between the sheets? Why was blood involved? What the fuck were you two doing? You're not doing it right if blood's involved. I wasn't sure if you would get infected. But I'm sorry. It was willful negligence on my part. Yeah, it was. And also, what the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. Fucking anime. What the actual fuck? What the fuck? Oh my god. I just, I've got to, I've got to take a moment to... What the fuck is this? Seriously. I, I can't hold on much longer. I, yeah, I'm not sure I can hold on much longer either, Big Hattie. This is a, yeah, this is, it, wow. Cringemas really did come early this year, didn't it? This really is living up to Cringemas. I was honestly not expecting something this cringe to be happening. I didn't want to infect you, but I didn't mind if you did get infected. What about informed consent, Togi? What about us? You did not tell us. You knew that this was a possibility. But you didn't think to inform us? You know, we still might have done this, but you did not give us the necessary information to make an informed decision. That's fucked up. Because I thought you would stay with me if you had the same condition. You infected us just so we would stay with you? My god. What the fuck? This is so fucked up. That's fucked up, Togi. Forgive me. I'll accept any punishment. Well, g give me a fucking cure, Togi. Apparently, because this is apparently a permanent condition. I don't know that there is any punishment. Stop that. I, I was going to ask you to infect me at some point anyway. Can I get another cringe? Can I please get another cringe? Because what the fuck is happening anymore in this story? Never in a million years would I have guessed that this is where this was going. Ah. Uh, I'm just sitting here curled up in a ball just ro rocking back and forth now because what the fuck is this? I can't, I can't deal with this. 
I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna lie here, held up in the fetal position, and just cry myself to sleep. That's how the stream's gonna end. This is too much cringe. This cringe, it's just through the roof. Uh. <laughs> Will I be writing a scathing review of this game? I don't even I don't even have the words. I don't know what I would even write about this game. I don't I don't know. Stop that. I was going to ask you to infect me at some point anyway. Really? Boy, there's something else you need to know about this condition. And there's also another symptom I lied about Xianchan too. So even if you did tell us, you wouldn't have told us everything. I kept quiet and listened. Firstly, when our thirst for blood is quenched, our brain temporarily lets go of oh, the limiter that's put on the abilities of our body. We get super strength? Are we gonna get super strength when we drink blood? Are we gonna be superhuman? What is this? Fucking anime. Fucking anime. Holy shit, anime. This is not how I thought this, this, you know, I thought, you know, if we did find out she actually was a vampire, I don't know what I thought would happen, but I didn't think it would be this. I didn't think we were going to get superpowers via blood sex. Maybe I should have thought that this was where I was going. You know, it, this entire time I've been thinking, you know, you guys have been saying that how cringe this game is, but like, I honestly thought this game was pretty fucking mild, honestly, but um, turns out I was wrong. This is, this is, this, this is pretty, pretty, pretty bad, pretty bad, pretty bad here. I don't even, I don't even know what to, what to think anymore. Let's just find out what superpowers we get when we drink blood. You saw the rocket in Central Park, right? That's my doing. I did it in exchange for Chian Chan's blood. <laughs> Ultra cringe. I'm gonna have to add that now. Chian <laughs> Chan wanted to. Chian Chan wanted to test how much bad we were allowed to do in this world. According to her theory, the rocket was supposed to go back to normal the next day. But that didn't happen, so she agreed with your theory instead. That's right. Wait, hang on, did I read one? But that didn't happen, so she agreed with your theory instead. That's right. But the inside of the rocket weren't normal. But the inside of the no rocket weren't normal? <laughs> just make it to a link, a link to the store page for this game. Yes. My god. Holy hell. But the insides of the rocket weren't normal. It was hollow. Nothing existed inside. It's a fake, isn't it? Why should you be surprised? yogi san shook her head. You'd still expect a thickness to the metal or some lining inside, wouldn't you? I don't know. It's it's a fake. It's a mock-up. What, what do you mean, thickness to the metal? There was no thickness at all? Like it was one-dimensional? Like less than one-dimensional? What are you saying? And there wasn't? That would mean... I don't know, but if my theory is wrong, that could be the key that leads us to the truth about IMA. I don't know that that's really that uh, noteworthy, honestly, but okay. If it's just the two of us, it might take a really long time to figure that out. About the other symptom I lied about, well, when we've got our thirst satisfied, we don't age. So, uh, you're saying we, uh, become super strong and we don't age. We're, 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 we're vampires. Um, Togi. Togi. Uh, Togi. Uh, I know, uh, Xion Chan said that there isn't a name for your condition, but, uh, that's fucking vampirism! We're fucking vampires! 
How are we not in some government lab being tested on day and night? We're vampires. Fucking anime. If you really want to, we could take as much time as we need. We could stop being human and really become a creature of the night, the way vampires do in legend. I thought, even if we turn into terrible people, we could get everyone back in the end. It would be worth it to spend an eternity trying. I'm sorry. It was selfish of me to get you into this. Yes, okay. Um. Yeah, yeah, it was selfish of you. But I, I guess infecting us with this illness isn't as bad as it seems. It's still fucked up that you have violated our, our bodily autonomy. But you also gave us, uh, like, super strength and uh, potential immortality. So, you know. Pros and cons, I guess. I'm not saying that, like, it's good that you did this, but there is a silver lining to it, at the very least. But... I really didn't want to be alone anymore. You don't need to start that now. That's how you've always been, Togi-san. I love you just the way you are. You don't have to feel sorry about anything. Wow, we're the ones who came out and said it. I love you. Come to think of it, I don't think I had ever said that before. Togi-san fell to her knees and cried like a baby. I thought... Maybe what we really needed wasn't to share a bed or an infection together, but just to share those simple words. Come on, wash your face. Let's go. Go where? It's so late. This is going to be our time from now on, isn't it? Yeah. We've got a long way to go together. You might as well get used to it now. Togi-san wiped her tears away and took my hand. We got the achievement Vampire. That's just straight up the name of the achievement. And that's another route completed. Oh, we've got some kind of epilogue? No, it's just gonna be a slideshow and some credits, is it? Woo! Yeah! Gaming! We did it! And just in time, just as we come up on the three hour mark, just as we come up on the hour. Yes. My god. What a game. What a game. I'm gonna have to fill Devil Bird on this, because I'm assuming she's falling asleep by now. I'm gonna have to inform her on this in the next couple of days. And how do I even summarize what happened? How do I say to another human being what happened here today in this game. You know? How do I find the words? This is utter insanity. And it's not even good. It's not even like the good kind of insanity where it's like, oh, they knew that they were going out of their minds. They knew that they were going balls to the wall and they were throwing everything in. This feels like they just don't understand what normal is anymore. They've been so surrounded by anime tropes and like manga and visual novels that they just don't even understand that what they're doing is utterly insane. Make a highlight of the whole vampire part? It's more than a clip can fit. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I'm like, how do I clip any one part of this? I'm like, it's just like so many, it's just layers upon layers. Yeah, it's going to have to be a highlight. Utter insanity. Actually, is my is my chat broken or something? Oh. Okay, there it goes. That was weird. Was it because I had the wasn't didn't have the game up or something? I don't know what's going on with my previewer. Uh. 
This is what gaming's all about, make a highlight of the, all the writers. This is normal, right? Relatable? This is, yeah, this is normal. This is what normal people do. This is a normal story. Tender heart inside you. The end. I don't know if that's the name of the ending or what. <laughs> or they're, they're, they're just talking about like how vampires see us. There's a tender heart inside of us and that's all the vampires care about. God, what insanity. All right, do I have to click something? Okay. Well, there we go. That's another round done for campus notes. Get over to just chatting. While I, uh... Warning, cringe detected. <laughs> Your review? Cringe out of cringe. Oh boy. Oh my god. Holy cow. What a story, Mark. Now then, let's open up Firefox and see who we can raid after that exhausting... I don't even know what to call it. Hmm. Okay, I've got three choices here. Okay, we could do... Hmm. Okay, and what's uh, KP doing? Asmophobia, is she playing with other people? Sounds like it could be kind of a bit hectic to go into. Oh my god, ads. I just want to see what she's doing. Ugh, oh, hang on. I mean... So yes! That is the end of a cringe mess, but not the end of a story time Saturdays or the end of um, campus notes. Uh, forget me not. We'll of course be back here next Saturday doing some more, beginning another round as we uh, try to get to the true ending for this game. Uh, thanks everyone for showing up. Thanks again, of course, to TG for uh, that raid. I guess I'll give him another shout out, even though, like I said, most of the people here just came in with that raid, so. Uh, EG. Um, and yes, thank you everyone who stuck around. Um, of course, thanks to Devil Bird, Bruxis. Of course, thanks to Bruxis and Big Hattie for being here before even the raid. And uh, Devil Bird, TG, who else came in? I mean, there was a ton right back at the beginning there. Uh, thank you to Dem Demondra uh, and Aqua Ace uh, GG for the follows. Um, of course, MPR and uh, uh, MPH. Did I get those names backwards? I might have gotten some of those letters backwards. Hey, that was well-timed. <laughs> Again, that's on a random timer. I didn't activate that or anything. Uh, but yes. You go over there to follow Big Hattie. Um, and yeah, it's just wow. I don't, I don't even know what to say. Um, what are we doing on Monday? Did we start anything on Monday? I don't think we did. What are we doing on Monday? Hang on, let, let me have a look at my own channel to see what... Okay, what's KP doing? Oh, the ads are over. Okay, she's playing with other people, but it doesn't look too hectic. I think we can go over there. Um, but first, let me check my own uh, Twitch so I can see what I was doing last Monday. Uh, my memory for everything just goes right out the window. Uh, I want. No, I don't want to play the VOD. Oh, play my own live stream. Um. Oh, we did a uh, Nevmo, didn't we? Yeah, I was doing a uh, Nevmo, Capsula, that Russian uh, capsule game thing, and then I did. What did we do after that? We started something after it. What happened after Nevmo. Yeah, some weird, obscure, random uh, puzzle game. Yeah, that. It really helps, really narrows it down. Oh, we started uh, Cap Space Captain McCallery. That's what we're doing. Okay, Monday will be Space Captain McCallery. And then Wednesday will be something else and something else after that. Fuck. I don't know. I don't remember anything anymore. Time is a flat circle. Okay, yes. Yes, the pirate game. Yes. 
Okay, so we're doing that on Monday. And then Wednesday will be presumably some other puzzle game. And then Friday, we finished We Know the Devil. Don't have anything planned for that, but again, I assume we'll try and keep uh, it on theme with Friday, Friday. So probably some horror game on Friday. And then, yeah, next Saturday, we're back to uh, down, uh, down with the vampire sickness, as it were. Okay, raids warming up. Um, and yeah, thanks everyone for staying around. Thanks for anyone else who uh, has been lurking this entire time as well. You I appreciate you and I see you, uh, but I won't call you out by name. Um, and yeah, I love you all. Hey, thanks, NPR. Thanks for sticking around. Um, yeah, I love you all. You're all my little humble bees. And I will see you all either on a Monday or I will see you all in your own streams. Uh, yeah. Bye.